he's he's proved himself. He's earned the respect. It's a festive weekend in the area with fall for Greenville happening downtown and here on the Furman campus. A beautiful Saturday afternoon for football. The Paladins home to take on the Western Carolina Catamounts. A key showdown in the SOCON on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. As we forge into October, here's what the Southern Conference standings look like. Mercer, Chattanooga, and Samford have set the pace to this point. There are the Paladins, just one conference loss. They feel like they're still in the hunt, but have to pretty much win out. Western Carolina's Kerwin Bell says that his program is eyeing a run toward postseason play. And I've already welcome in with Jared Singleton, Pete Hannity. So, so far, Western Carolina among the most improved teams in the Southern Conference. Firm and critical game for them. They're trying to protect the home field. Absolutely, Pete. You have a Western Carolina team. They, they've got a new ju juice about themselves. You know, new energy on that sideline. They feel confident about the different weapons they have in place, but still trying to find that identity. And like you said, Furman, they really are trying to make sure they continue to pursue their goals of bringing a championship back here to Greenville. So we've got a, a, a dandy on our hands today. Yes, we do. Well, the quarterback for Western Carolina, Carlos Davis, will throw it all over the place. And his top target, one of the best route runners in the Southern Conference in Raphael Williams. Yeah, Raphael Williams, fifth in the conference with y uh, yards for catch right now, doing a fantastic job of really being able to take the top off of, an, of a defense. And on the same token, Pete, looking on the flip side for Furman, they have a fantastic running back in Dominic Roberto. Just a big, strong, burly back can really run in between the tackles extremely well, protects the football, and really controls and establishes the run game for this Paladin offense. So he's got to get going early, and being able to get him going early is going to make, a lot, make things a lot easier for this Furman offense as they try to pursue to get another Southern Conference championship. Dominic Roberto, the huge game and a one-point loss a year ago against Western Carolina at 196 yards against Kerwin Bell's team, now in his second season. Prior head coaching stops for Kerwin Bell at Jacksonville, then Valdosta State, where he won a Division II National Championship. Last year, they had a rough start to their season, but they won four of their final five. Came in this year with a lot of momentum, and he is making believers out of the fans from the school from Cullowee, North Carolina. There's Clay Hendricks. He's in his sixth season at his alma mater, trying to build on this great tradition they have here at Furman. Most SOCON titles, most wins in SOCON history, and Clay Hendricks feels like he's now got the combination on offense and defense to make a run despite a tough loss here a couple of weeks ago against Sanford. Absolutely. I mean, Sanford's playing really well at a high level right now, but, you know, this Furman team for years, Pete, they've been able to compete for SOCON championships. They have the right attitude and the right energy on that sideline, and I, I think a big part of that has come from their coach. Ian Williams, an NC State transfer, to kick it away for the Paladins as Western Carolina will get the ball to start out. So good to have you on board. What a beautiful picturesque day we have here in Greenville, South Carolina. And letting it sail over his head is Taryn Torn. It'll be a touchback, and we'll see the Catamounts go on offense for the first time today. A Western Carolina team that can really load it up. Fifth in the nation in total offense, led by this man, Carlos Davis. First year as a full-time starter, came into them, uh, came to their program from East Mississippi Junior College. He takes some risks. He's had some shoulder issues that's maybe impact his velocity, but look at the touchdown numbers instead of the interceptions for him. Well, uh, you know, you got to have a quarterback that's confident, and, you know, he's one of those guys that he feels really good about his abilities and his talents, and he should. He's, he's proved himself. He's earned the respect of this team. He's got a good offensive line. That's what's going to be important to, uh, this afternoon, Pete. How well does that offensive line protect him to allow him to utilize all the assets that he has on that offensive unit? Several of his 11 interceptions have been the result of deflections. Got a shoulder banged up against Georgia Tech. Didn't play in the following game against Presbyterian. However, they feel like he's back to 100%. And to start things out, T.J. Jones. And room across the 35. T.J. Jones... They're looking for a breakout game for him this year. He led them in rushing a year ago with nearly 600 yards, had a couple of 100-yard rushing games, but so far he has not really gotten in the groove. See that tempo right now, Pete, they're coming out hot. Nice first down play. 
Nice second down play again, creating a third and short situation. That's how you want to stay on schedule to start a ball game. Jones stopped by Bryce McCormick, about a yard shy of the first down marker. Catamounts fifth in the SoCon on third downs, 38% this year. Going against a Furman team that's second in the conference. Big improvement for them, but Jones able to get the yards necessary in a first down. And you see right there in that formation, they were able to spread everyone out to the field, and, and the quarterback was able to say, okay, I, I'll have one backer, you know, in the box. I like my numbers in my, in my offensive lineman, so he was able to run the football to keep the first down going. Davis throws, caught immediately out of the backfield, but Jalen Williams taken down. Popped almost immediately by McCormick, who's off to a good start. That's a great tackle in open field, and that's what you need to do if you're firming on defense. You've got to make sure you give, you know, you win first down. You know, you don't want to make, allow the offense to be able to get a lot of positive, um, you know, yards on first down because then it, gets, it keeps them on schedule. You want to get them off schedule if you're playing defense. Second down, 10. Davis lowers his shoulder, runs into McCormick once more. But a nice job to make it third down a little bit more manageable. Confirm and get off of the field. Big third down right here. Can they get off of the field? As you see the replay, he didn't like what he see. Saw some space, was able to make a play. Trying to get another third down. Conversion, handoff, and breaking through Jalen Williams. Up first down and more into Furman territory down close to the 35. And again, what he's doing is he's looking at the numbers. When they spread you out like that on offense, they're trying to see how many linebackers are you going to keep in the box. And if they have more offensive linemen than you have guys in the box, they're going to hand that every time to try to get that first down. Catamounts on the move on their first possession of the game. Looking deep is Davis, but overthrowing the intended target. I really like the aggression I'm seeing from this Western Carolina offense. They're coming out. They, you can tell they're confident. You can tell that they're they're kind of rolling through those first 10 plays that they went through in that Thursday walk through, that Friday walk through, to say, hey, we want to start the game out with these plays, these formations, to really see what Furman's defense is going to give us today. Second and 10. It'll be Jones looking to cut, breaks mm. a tackle. Room inside the 20. They're really finding something with that kind of inside zone, Pete. That offensive line, they're coming out. They're doing a fantastic job, as you see here on the replay. I mean, look at that hole. Heck, Pete, you and I could both run through that gap right there. But they're doing a fantastic job, those big boys up front. First and 10, fire into the end zone. Oh. Leaping grab, incomplete. Nice he, try by Sincere Lee, but it'll be second down. And he's getting behind the corner. I mean, he's doing a fantastic job running his route. Just have to have strong hands and bring that thing in. Ivan Yates getting the started corner today on the coverage. This pass this year, he's broken up. Catamounts working in the red zone. There's six in the SOCON in red zone offense. Furman defensively, one of the few issues they've had on D. They're at the bottom of the league in red zone D. Davis, another scramble, Ooh. hit hard. Ooh. Travis Blackshear made the first hit. Late penalty marker thrown in. Man. It took three guys to try to stop him, and they couldn't get him on the ground. Got a flag on the play. You see here on the replay. And this this is what he brings to the table. He has the ability, uh, stiff arm, get off me, uh, lowers the shoulder. Two, one, two, three, four guys trying to get him down. Man, love that kind of confidence from your quarterback. Michael Farmer's our referee. So they're going to take a look at whether or not, as they try to confirm, if Blackshear indeed targeted on that hit, the senior cornerback, all SOCON performer, yeah, that was the one who made the initial contact. That would be huge right there, Pete. You see here on the replay. I mean, Boy, I think he's, he's low. He made the contact around the upper forearm of Davis. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure about that one, but I'll tell you what, if that's, it's pretty bad if you get kicked out the game for targeting you get trucked by the quarterback yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean he gets straight trucked by the quarterback well, and then he gets a targeting penalty from it and gets kicked out the ball game you got davis at 6 3 2 15. big guy back there Ooh. and the 215 may be a little bit low <laughs> pete i'm sorry man if if you get if, if i'm a player 
and I get kicked out the game for targeting. And the play that I get kicked out on is me getting trucked. I am not looking forward to Sunday film session because I just know my boys on the team are going to give me a hard time about that one. But, just hey, like look, yeah, the, the, if you're Western Carolina, if you're a Western Carolina fan, you've got to be feeling really good about this first drive. I mean, they've had no negative plays, okay? They've, they're running the tempo. They're, they're, you know, getting everything that they want um, that they're calling. They're able to get it. So, again, I really like what I'm seeing uh, from this Western Carolina offense. And you can tell that they've definitely prepared these first 10 or 15 plays because they're running them to a script. Clay Hendricks, you saw him on the sidelines. He plays a lot of corners. They'll have five cornerbacks on the field at any given time, but Blackshear is clearly their best and against it. Pass oriented team like the Catamounts are. That's a player he can least afford to lose. Keep in mind, Western Carolina offensively playing without Desmond Reed, their top rusher. He's out with ankle issues. Let's get the call from our referee. Well, we heard the microphone break up, so we'll simply see He's if back on number the one goes back out. So they wave off the targeting. I think it was a good call. It looked like he they hit felt bad for enough. him. They felt bad for him. We can't throw this man out the game. He got <laughs> trucked on that play. We can't throw him out the game. We got to let him redeem himself. So another third down try for the Catamounts. Two or two so far on this opening series of the game. Again, big third down. I wouldn't be surprised again, Pete, they go to that inside zone and you know, put one of these two backs that they have in the backfield in motion to kind of get the numbers that they like and then run that inside zone to pick up this first down. Keep in mind, turnovers have been a big negative for the Catamounts on O and a big plus for Furman on D. Toward the end nice. zone, the grab. Oh. Out of bounds. They might take a look at that one, though, Jalen Pete. Williams trying to make his second TD catch of the year, but for now, it is waved off. They might take a look at that one. I thought he got one foot in. All you need is one toe to give come down. We'll see it right there. But they're going to go for it. I think they're going to go for it if they don't get buzzed to see if it's a, a review from upstairs. Herman Bell was standing next to the official on the far side of the field. They had the offense waiting there in case they decided to review, but instead we'll see the field goal unit coming on. Richard McCollum, he's kind of their short guy. Paxton Robertson, their long guy, but let's hold everything. As Michael Farmer. So we will get a review of that. I think that's the right call. Let's take a look here. Nice throw, and again, puts the ball in that left foot. I think they're going to have to judge it based on his right foot. I don't think he – did he possess the ball with the left foot in? I don't know if they're going to be able to determine by video if he possessed the ball still with the left foot in, then obviously the right foot lands. Out left of foot's in, right foot's out of bounds. We, we can see that. But look at those gloves. Those white gloves are around the football. I think that's a touchdown, Pete. I think that's a touchdown. I think they're smart to review it because it could be a 50-50. The fact that it was called incomplete might be the fact that had it been called a TD, the video may have been able to confirm that. But we wait and see what the determination is and if the Catamounts will be trying for the extra point or have McCollum out there for a reasonably short field goal attempt. But again, either way, I think this Western Carolina team, Coach Bell, has to feel really good about what he's seen on this first drive. Again, the quarterback's making good decisions. He's protecting the football. He's keeping plays alive, you know, working his feet in the pocket, not liking what he's seeing and being able to make a play to pick up, you know, positive yards and not, you know, put the ball in a dangerous um, position. You see here, again, look, hands, boom. That's a touchdown, left foot down. That's a touchdown, Pete. That's a touchdown. Caleb Williams coming out of the backfield has been a really good receiver for them. In fact, second on their team in catches. So he's a target to keep an eye on. Oh, wow. I, and again, I think had it been called a touchdown, wow. then the review would have upheld it. I think what they must have determined is he did not possess the ball. Keep an eye what? right here. Boom. I mean, can we get that in slow-mo? I know we had it in slow-mo before, but I'm telling you, look at look at his hands. He has the football. 
And you see Kerwin <laughs> Bell is <laughs> saying the exact same thing that you are. He's not on our headphones. But uh, if you th just look at it, he has the football in his hands, and the, and the left foot goes down first. I don't see how you make that call. But, hey, that's why I'm not wearing the zebra stripes. Pete, I'm up here with you. So instead, it'll be a 27-yard attempt. That's a tough one. McCollum again, their guy from 45 yards in, and then Paxton Robertson will try long field goal for that. Because you think about it, Pete, Coach Bell is saying, hey, we're playing a really good team in Burma. We got to get touchdowns instead of field goals. And when, you, when you're going against a really good team, trying to get an upset on the road. Oh, and it's blocked. It's a live ball. The holder, Dickerson, will go fall on it. And the Furman Paladins denying the Catamounts. Points Damn. on the opening drive that looks so good for Western Carolina. That's tough right there, Pete. That's tough. And Coach Bell is hot. He's hot about that. But, hey, great pressure right up the middle. Who got a hand on it? Big number seven got his hands on it. Nice block. When you hear the double thud, Pete, to do, you better start looking around. You better start looking around because that ball is live and it's somewhere. But hey, Tyler Huff is the quarterback for the Furman Paladins. He has come in from PC with two years of eligibility remaining and really added a calming presence to their offense. Missed some time earlier in the year after suffering an injury in the Charleston Southern game. But here he is, the grad transfer firing. Incomplete, but a penalty flag thrown in the secondary. Yeah, I think someone got a little handsy right there in the secondary. Huff coming in at 69% passing. Did not play against Samford. So the penalty against the Catamounts, and that should further enrage their head coach on the sideline not far from where that flag was thrown well the thing is right now pete this western carolina team they've got to calm the emotions down and that's the sign of a mature football team and trying to build that identity that we talked about in the open hey we didn't get the touchdown that we felt was should have been ours we had a block on a block field goal and roberto with room oh. across midfield tough to catch when he gets past you he'll win the foot race and a firm in touchdown Great job right there by that right side of the offensive line, creating a huge opening. And you saw right there exactly what we talked about in the open. Roberto having the speed and the ability to take it to the house and put points on the board. If you're Western Carolina, you've got to, you've got to try to weather this storm and, and, and get back focused into this game and not let this thing get out of hand. 62 yards for Roberto, his longest run of the year. And it goes for his sixth rushing touchdown here in 2022. And just like that, how quickly the momentum swings. Howden's trying to avenge their tough loss last year on the road. They had two 11-point leads before falling by one in Cullowee against these Catamounts. Extra point up and good for Alex LaPro. And the Furman Paladins own a 7-0 lead on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. When you stay at Averbo, the host doesn't stay with you. Because without privacy in your vacation home, it isn't really a vacation, is it? The 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 3rd. Here's the thing about the good times in life. We don't always realize we're in them. When greatness is unfolding right in front of us. When superstars, rising stars, jokers, and freaks collide. This time could be up there with the greatest of times. It's a beautiful time for basketball. What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself 
some records were forever. That you'd seen everything that there was to see. Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. This time could be up there with the greatest of times. And it starts now. You gotta be kidding me! A block on the field goal attempt by Western Carolina, then a 62-yard sprint by Dominic Roberto. The Furman Paladins have a 7-0 lead on the Catamounts of Western Carolina. And our Southern Conference football telecast is presented by Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. By BMW and by Bon Secours. And here at Paladin Stadium with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity with you. Beautiful day. Let's give you a sense of things today is that the Paladins at 2-1 and one on the Southern Conference. Their folks tell us, look, they feel like if they can win out, which would include some big games ahead against Mercer and Chattanooga, they feel like they've got a chance to perhaps eventually claim another SOCON title or would certainly be in the conversation for postseason play. Here's the run-up, and the kick is away. Ian Williams kicking it again to the end zone. This will be returned, and bringing it out is Horn. And Taryn Torn will be knocked out of bounds near the 25-yard line. Let's give you our BMW keys to the game in this matchup of teams clad in purple, Jared. And, well, you look at, I think, being efficient is a key part of it, but take me through. Well, I mean, Furman has to establish the run game. I think we saw that on their first drive uh, with their big, long run. Um, that they had and again they have to be able to regulate the tempo that this Western Carolina offense is going to bring to the table on the flip side West Carolina they've got to unleash Carlos Davis they've got to let him really take it to the next level and make sure they prevent the big play from Furman's offense um, but again they haven't had a chance to really do that because Furman were, was able to take it to the house 62 yards out Jones going nowhere really nice job Stepping up defensively. But I tell you, Pete, this, this Western Carolina team, they've got to settle down. Again, I understand they didn't get the, the touchdown call that they thought, I thought, their coach thought that they should have received. But you can't allow those types of opportunities or moments in the game to get you off uh, off focus. And I think that's what, what's happened. Uh, you saw with the blocked field goal. You saw with the holding penalty on defense. Then you saw with the big long run they gave up. they got to settle things down and play their – played their game because they're only down 7 nothing. Sheila Miller on that previous stop. Toller Keegley on the dump off from Davis. Another first down for the Catamounts who moved from their 25 inside of the Furman red zone on the first possession. Keegley, a redshirt freshman out of Pensacola with his seventh catch of the season. This time a handoff and going nowhere in the run game. Nice stop right there by the Furman defense. Again, you know, Furman's defense, they don't want to give up, you know, too many positive yards on first down because that, that you know, is what kicks off this tempo offense, um, you know, because the offense is looking to get pick up four, five, six yards. You want to try to limit that to one, two yards, get them behind and off schedule um, as an offense. Another time hitting a running back oh out of the backfield. God. TJ Jones doing his best. Carlos Davis Dang. ran hard into Ivan Yates on hey, the first down. This truck of people tonight for oh, this yes. afternoon, Pete. That's the second big truck that we've seen. Look at this. Lower the shoulder. Bow. Woo. <laughs> right in the chest. This is the second one we've seen in the first quarter, man. Little misdirection QB keep. Davis, that's him being unleashed. Hey, Western Carolina's got a trucking company or something up there. But, uh, do, the, do their players, you know, uh, study trucking? I mean, because they are definitely doing it this afternoon. Carlos Davis came in having carried for just 39 yards, 42 attempts, 15 sacks uh, against the Catamounts offense, impacting some of his numbers, but he is dual purpose. Throws it this time. Ooh, Williams, ooh, little juke, <laughs> sheds a defender. <laughs> Gets inside the 25. Hey, they're putting on a highlight tape this, uh, this afternoon, Pete. They're just trucking guys, shaking guys out of their cleats, falling on the ground. Check this out, Pete. I mean, this is the hard, one of the hardest things in football is to try to make an open field tackle. Oh, can't see it on the replay. We, we got to get, get that one back. That was fantastic. Got to see that juke. Third catch so far for the running back, Jalen Williams. Have yet to hear from Raphael Williams. Play action. Oh. Pressure. Davis. 
got a first down. And again, being able to utilize his athletic ability in the pocket, he's so hard to try to gather and tackle, as you see here on the replay. Whoop, watch out. And again, has the ability to understand where the first down marker is, find it, and keep the drive alive. And Skiana making the open field tackle. Again, Western Carolina in the red zone, and once more, the penalty flag. You see, this is the kind of thing that's going to kill an offensive energy, is having these silly false starts. It's too late in the season. By the time you get to mid-October, Pete, you shouldn't be having any false starts. Five start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Samari Sadler, the guilty party. They moved him around a little bit this year, and you saw him jump at left guard. So it'll be first and 15, backed up to the 22 as we wind down here in the opening quarter. Nice blocking. Jalen Williams mm. gets inside the 15. Hey, and, and again, you see the receivers setting the edge and making sure they get in their blocks on the outside because, you know, Weston, they want to be able to give their athletes the ball in space. Obviously, you've seen that with a lot of these, you know, kind of dump, dump offs in the flats. And again, when you have your receivers blocking on the outside, it makes it real easy to pick up six, seven yards. Davis, quick dump. A.J. Bellinger, the tight end. Back to action this week. He's missed the past couple of games, and Bellinger, they think, can be a big weapon for them. Kind of that hybrid tight end receiver type. Yeah, he's got great hands, but he also can block and do a good job on the outside. Again, 44, just not being able to, not tall enough to really tip that thing away, but you see Western Carolina's offense, they've got weapons on the outside and on the perimeter. Catamounts denied points in their opening drive, trying to strike back to the end zone, deflected. Nice job recovering. Here's Ivan Yates. He's been active so far. This firm of defense, they've got to really dial it in right here, Pete. they got their backs on the wall right now. This West of Carolina team is picking up momentum as the, as, the, as the drive is going on. They've got to be able to stand tall here on the goal line. Trying to get it to Terrence Horn. Second and goal. End zone again in stride. Touchdown. And a touchdown. Raphael Williams, his third of the year. Carlos Davis has now thrown 13 on the season. Great response to that um, touchdown that they gave up, Pete. They just went right down the field again, finding the matchups that they like, and their receivers are really winning the matchups. I mean, all these receivers are getting behind these corners. You know, they're doing a great job of running their routes hard you know, getting to that open space, and the quarterback is doing a great job of putting the ball where just his guy can get it. I told you we're going to have a fun one this afternoon, Pete. Richard McCollum adds to his Western Carolina record of consecutive extra points made, pushing toward 85. Take a timeout in a 7-7 game here in Greenville. manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X Range. Your next X Venture starts here. Receive $1,500 lease credit models now through October 31st. Living with joint pain isn't easy, but lately dealing with it has felt even harder. So you've been putting up with it. That stops today. Today you stand up for yourself and say enough. And we solve it. Because we have the solutions to get you back on your feet. You're ready. It's your time. Visit bondsupport.com slash ortho to make an appointment and get started with your joint replacement today. Bond Secor, healthcare for the universe of you. from nowhere never gonna happen in your dreams kid hundred to one shot we know something about that we're with you every step of the way you fight 
open up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> this is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. Back at Paladin Stadium on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Beautiful day to watch football. And our telecast presented each and every week proudly by Ingalls. Low prices, love the saving. With Jared Singleton, Pete Hannity, and boy, Raphael Williams, we talked about the route running. So crisp, the transfer from Tusculum showing it on that touchdown. We'll give you another look at that in a moment as Herman gets set to receive a kickoff for the first time this afternoon. I mean, you said it, Pete. I mean, this... This offense is, is, you know, clicking on all cylinders. I mean, they've had a couple negative plays, but I really like what I'm seeing from this Western Carolina offensive unit. Um, and, again, I think Furman's defense is going to have their hands full trying to cover all these different weapons on the outside. And then you can't forget about the quarterback because he can make plays with his legs as well. Here's Wayne Anderson. And Anderson showing you some power at the end. Gets across the 30. And back to work goes the Furman offense, which hasn't been out there long, but already has seven points on the day. Here's the touchdown, Davis to Williams. Yeah, again, he just wins his, his matchup. Cornerback doesn't have a chance. He's just, you know, playing catch up the whole time. And then Williams just does his dance, as he should. It's a nice day. And our listeners should go ahead and dance their way down the Ingles and get them a nice snack. And uh, I think I might hit me some Ingles after this game, Pete. As you regularly do. <laughs> Tyler Huff and the Paladins back to work. Two snaps the first time they touched it. One was on a penalty. The other, Roberto's 62-yard run. And back he comes, number eight, who's really evolved as a running back here. Came in kind of in a, in a fullback package. And really that hybrid tailback, fullback kind of guy for them now. Again, he can just run the ball right up the gut. In between the tackles, he has the vision. There's no playing around with this guy. I mean, this guy's going to come downhill, hit you right in the face, okay? And this offensive line, they've got to do a good job of keep creating those holes because he's going to make you look right. I, it's nothing like playing for or blocking for a running back that can always make you look right. Kendall Dean, the wide receiver jump. You know, these wide receivers, I can't stand when a wide receiver gets a false start penalty, Pete. It makes no sense to me. I mean, just watch the ball. I mean, there's no need for you to try to anticipate the snap count. Just watch the football. You're looking at the ball anyway. You know, they're looking down the line of scrimmage. Just move when the ball moves. Dump off in the flat, Dean. And Kendall Dean, who back in 2018 was a freshman All-America at James Madison, came to the Paladins during this past offseason, and they felt like they got a steal. And Clay Hendricks, from talking to him this week, really described it. He goes, you know, essentially we were a running back team with a really good tight end, Ryan Miller, who, of course, is still in the program and their leading receiver. We've really added wide receivers to our offense over the past couple of years, and that's really helped us out. And then Huff has been nice. perfect nice defense. coming in as Joshua Harris has hit hard, but the late flag is thrown in. Uh. I don't know about that one, Pete. Samari Dukes, true freshman out of Miami. Looks like he's going to be the one they threw the flag on. He got there half second. But again, the ball's in the air. It's his ball. Number 24. Penalty is spotted a foul. First down. It's Contact his, it's, the ball. It's his ball just as much as it is the receiver's ball. So I, he's trying to gain position on it. Tough call. But, hey, that's, again, that's why I'm up here in the booth with you and I'm not on the field. Third penalty so far on Wester. So out of the 41 now, first and 10. Huff the pitch. And Roberto, Ooh. there's the power. Ooh. Looks like Furman's got a trucking department as well in their, in their program, Pete. I mean, I mean, this is the third time we're seeing guys just getting trucked down. And Roberto just truly has the power. I mean, you just look at his build, just coming, boom. You better pack a lunch whenever you come and try to take this guy down, Pete, because he has all the power. He's got the speed and the ability. And I like that his block, his his uh, his receivers are blocking for him. The entire unit trying to make sure that he has a lane to hit, because when he hits it, he might take it to the house. 
All the way into Catamount's territory on mm. that carry. Look, four, one, two, three, five guys to try to get one guy down. And again, we talked about it in the open with the, the keys to the game. They've got to establish the run game. You see right here coming right to your to your screen. Boom. One, two, three, four, five guys to get one guy down. So Powerful word, back. Word physical was used a lot by the head coaches coming in. Looks like Hendricks says his team plays with a blue collar mentality. Second down, huff, pressure. And oh. Wide of his intended target. And see, when you're able to run the football extremely well, Pete, it's going to open up some of those bootleg passes, as you see here on the replay. You know, everyone's looking at Roberto thinking, oh, he's getting the football. Nope, quarterback's got it. Rolls out, puts some athletes on the field. Nice pop. A little bit wide for Luke Shiflett. So third down. Mm. Paladin, third in the SOCON at 44%. And they're kind of in that no man land too, Pete. So they might try to, you know, if they don't pick it all up here on third down, go for it on fourth and short. Dean and Catamount snuffed that out beautifully. What a great job. Western Carolina, a lot of new faces on the defense. That time Cam McCutcheon, the cornerback. Stay with the receiver in a fourth down situation. I believe we'll see the punting unit. Not a big fan of that play, Pete. Again, I think, you know, you've got so much space on the field. You've got athletes all over the field. To try to throw a screen back into where the defense is coming, you know, to, pr to pursue the football on a third and six play, I just think there could have been something else in the playbook in that moment. Brian Levy's punt will go out of bounds. Let's see where they say it went out because it was angling toward the Catamount sideline. And they'll place it at the 20. We'll take a timeout on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Uh, I think we're going just fine. That was, did you, uh, did I, you got in my ear about uh, that we were in a break zone, right? That's what you were telling me? And that's always good, too. Oh, good. And that was a good point. And if you want to, my man, if when we're getting close to a break zone, just let me know so I know it's coming. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I think we're just playing football, coming back. Our next big thing will be the thing between the second, the first and the second quarter, coming off of that break when we do the uh, Catamount Super Bowl deal. Sure, let's do it. Seven seven game, Western Carolina about to go back on offense here at Paladin Stadium on this beautiful October afternoon. Now we expect many more points 
to be scored, even though Furman's been playing great defensively throughout the year. Two of the top four in SoCon scoring on the field today. And the Catamounts, boy, they, they're going full throttle, all uh, gas, no brakes for the most part whenever they get the football. Absolutely. And you see it with the tempo. They have the athletes on the field. And they've got a quarterback that has confidence. And that's the thing, Pete. You can have all the strategy that you want. But if your quarterback doesn't feel confident, if he doesn't have that kind of moxie and, and true leadership about him, it really doesn't matter. But this guy, he does. And I think, you know, he's able to, you know, see what the defense is giving him and then make sure that he's putting the ball in a position to take care of it, not to turn it over, and to keep the offense on schedule. So it should be a really fun afternoon watching these two teams go at it. Ooh, nice pancake Davis, block. plenty of time over the middle. Jones knocked down pretty much as he makes the catch. Evan DiMaggio, who is related, by the way, in case you're wondering, he's a grandnephew of the late great Yankee Clipper on the stop. Second and seven upcoming. Saw the left guard in that last play help his center out and just drilling the, the nose guard right in his rib cage on that double team pass block. Love seeing that. My, my guy is Todd Miko Gregory. I'd, ha I'd have a guy pinned up. He'd come, boom, put that guy on his backside on those pass blocks. The third down for the Catamounts. Catamounts a year ago put the most yards on screen than anyone did. Little screen nice and defense. read nicely. There's McCormick who was active on the opening series. There is a penalty flag down. Great job right here. Again, defense was able to read the screen play. 31 is able to get out in the flats. Offense. Number 19. Got a false start call. But again, great job by 31 down. of understanding what the offense was doing. He read the screen, saw those big boys trying to get out in the flats and, and get and become blockers. Um, but he was able to beat that and make a great open field tackle. Great job by 31. McCormick closing in on 35 tackles on the season. Junior linebacker out of Franklin, Tennessee for this Furman team. So third down, a little bit longer. Catamount so far, two of three on third down tries. Empty backfield. Ooh. Davis trying to get away. That'll be stopped well shy. Eventually ran into Braden Gilby, top tackler on this Furman team. Center got center just simply got beat on that play, Pete. Again, he got beat with a simple swim move, and that caused the pocket to collapse. Once that pocket started to collapse, Davis had no chance but to try to bail. You see right here, he's got pressure right in the middle of his face, and then he had to try to do the best he can, but just not enough right there. Look at that nice swim move by the Furman defensive line. Great job by this defense of being able to get off the field, win third down, and get the football back to their offense. First time we've seen Brandon Dickerson today. Went really not all that strong, a little bit in his face. And Callie Chiswick will let it bounce. Now he'll try to return. Cut it back. There you go. Oh. And eventually wrapped up. Not enough as speed. As he gets beyond the 25. Paladins go back to work. By the way, when they blocked that field goal on the first series of the game by the Catamounts, it's the second time this year that they have blocked a field goal. They've also blocked an extra point. They're among, right up at the top of the nation in terms of turnovers forced is Furman. So they've done a lot of really good things on defense and special teams. And their offense, the scoring numbers have been pretty good. They're trying to run the ball and balance it with the pass this year. They've been pretty effective in both of those categories, but they're trying to get more vertical in their passing game. Yeah, and you mentioned that. You know, We talked to Coach about that this week. Wanting to get in those extra weapons. Ooh, another truck. Devin Abrams, his first oh, touch God. of the game. Another power back that Furman can run at you, and he's got a first down. The trucking company's in Greenville. <laughs> the trucking company's in Greenville, Pete. I mean, big run again. Check this out. Right coming at threes coming in. Boom. Feel free to wrap up three. But anyway, Pete, again, I think, you know, if Furman can get those offensive weapons on the outside that can really take the top off of the defense, kind of the way that Raphael Williams is able to do. And Abrams is oh, having success arm. here. Another run that gets a first down. That is in Canamount territory at the 44. If they can get those outside weapons like a Raphael Williams for West of Carolina here, Pete, I'm telling you, they'll be able to click on all cylinders, uh, this Furman offensive unit. But you can tell these backs, they run with power. They run with attitude and aggression. I love it, Pete. 
So Abrams off the bench, fresh legs. Give uh -oh. it to him again. He loses his footing. Got to keep your feet. Got to keep your feet. Catamounts against the run. Fifth in the SOCON. They gave up 257 last week in their loss to Mercer, but that's what Mercer's offense can do to you. Abrams will get a breather. Roberto back out there. Yeah, Furman's got to be able to, again, we've talked about it, being able to establish the run is so important, so critical, because it makes things easier for your offense um, if you can establish that run game and you can throw the football down the field. Ryan, he can run it. Slides in for the first down. And a late flag oh, coming in. Come on. Pound an offensive lineman, particularly Anderson Tomlin, calling for a targeting as it was made by Andreas Keaton. Let's see what the story is. Well, hey, great job by the Western Carolina defense. They saw the screen. I don't know, Pete. It, it, he's turning his head because he doesn't want to get the targeting. Watch 21 coming. He's going to. After the play, personal foul. Jesus, number 21, late hit on the quarterback. Okay. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. So they'll Automatic. say defenseless player, no targeting, but he hit a defenseless Thank God. player. I, I, I get that. And again, you got to protect the quarterback. But uh, hey, great job by the West of Carolina defense. You know, they, they did their pass rush. They realized that they were the, the greatest pass rusher of all time, but they're probably not. It's probably just a screenplay. They read that correctly and took the screen away. But fantastic job by the quarterback, Tyler Huff, being able to see that and make a play with his feet and keep the drive alive and pick up an extra 15 yards. Five penalties on the Catamounts. Chance to add points before the end of this first quarter. Huff looking for Roberto in stride. Oh, Touchdown. Nice job. And he can catch, Pete. <laughs> he can do it all. Just the man the can fifth run catch the ball. of the year for Roberto, his first receiving touchdown. He can run the football. He can run routes. And over the shoulder catch, being able to take on the hit in the end zone, the man can do it all. Great route out the backfield. I don't know what three was doing. He, he was probably, I mean, three's the one that got trucked earlier in the drive, so he's probably thinking about that. And then the whole time he's thinking about that, he doesn't guard his man one-on-one -on -one in the flat. He's the only help over there. Touchdown, Paladins. LaPro makes it a 14-0 game here in the late stages of quarter number one. Paladins trying to mix it up. We said they wanted to get more vertical, and in that case, they didn't have a whole lot of real estate. They had a cover, but it turns out to be a 20-yard pass downfield by Huff. And Tyler Huff now in his first season playing QB at Furman, his sixth TD pass. And, you know, Huff's got to feel good about that. Again, he knows that the run game's been established. Now he can try to take advantage of those defensive backs because, again, West Carolina's going to have to put more guys in the box to try to slow down this run game. Guys getting trucked, guys getting stiffed arm. Heck, we got to put all more guys in the box to try to slow this thing down. It's going to open up things on the outside. Um, so Huff's going to be able to have those opportunities as this game progresses. But if you're West of Carolina, you got to feel good because, again, your offense is doing the same thing. You're able to, you know, really spread out this firm in defense. And I'd be curious, watch on this next possession. You see all the different motions. As they're motioning out the different running backs, is Furman walking and running with those guys to the outside, or are they just kind of slowly shifting the defense? That's letting the quarterback know whether they're in man or whether they're in zone. And then because he understands the offense, he knows where to go with that matchup, depending on what the defense is going to give him. So this is going to be a really fun chess match to see exactly how both of these teams play against each other because they're going to put up a lot of points. Here we go. The teams combined for over 950 yards. They're ahead of that pace in terms of total offense so far. Here's Horn on the return. Oh. Breaking away. Oh, nice hit. Not able to get further away from a guy uh -oh, who's been late flag. all over. Another late flag thrown in. Looked like McCormick on the tackle. I take that back. It was Callie Chillick. Let's see what the penalty mark is all about. Got a lot of laundry this first quarter, Pete. Well, as we said, each coach anticipating a very physical matchup today. And I think Kerwin Bell welcomes that for his team. He wants to see them play more physically as he continues to put his imprint on the Catamounts team. Clay Hendricks, Furman teams have always been a physical bunch. Always. Michael Farmer and Clay, in the white hat, our referee today. And Clay Hendricks, again, he, he's had that kind of mentality from day one. And, and that's what I, Furman, has established themselves in the SOCON uh, as being one of those top-tier teams. After the play, 
personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the receiving team, number 39. Penalty is 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. A six first quarter penalty on the Catamount. You saw the number as far as the penalty comparison is. Paladins have been flagged twice. Let's take another look at what happened. Let's see if this was truly unnecessary or not. Let's see if it was unnecessary or if it was necessary. Because again, he could have said something about his mother, Pete, and then it would have been necessary for him to use that, you know, that aggression. Could be our final play of the opening quarter. Uh-oh. And that one never looked like it had any fluidity from the start. And it's the, the little things like this, the false starts. False start. Offense, number 11, five-yard penalty. Remains first It's down. the false starts. It's the little things like that, that Western Carolina, they just got to get out of their own way. You know, th those are the things that Coach Bell's talked about as he's trying to establish his program. As you see him on the sideline, he's getting, he's hot. You know, he wants his guys, hey, we can't be having these kind of, you know, false start moments and penalties in a big game when, when we're in the game. Back him up to the 11. First and long over the middle. Williams sliding in nicely. Again, he, know, he saw that it was a zone defense. He knew exactly where his, his guys were going to be. Staying strong in the play and, and being able to make the play. Catamount's acting like it's near the end of the second quarter, not the first. Jalen Williams. Let's see if they give him forward progress for the first down as we come to an end of quarter number one. This little trivial tidbit you pick up as the season goes on. False start right now is the most commonly called penalty to this point in the college football season nationally. Really? I would have thought it'd be holding for something else. One quarter in the books. Furman up 14 to 7 on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. I think we're all set. My turn to drive. Here we go again. See, coach, it's all to the wrist. He took our pancake. He sure did. Wow. He really does catch everything. shop with the Rakuten app to get cash back anytime, anywhere. I even get cha-ching when I sing. Home decor, clothes, electronics, and mirrors. I can shop at over 3,500 stores, including travel sites. Udemy. 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 No matter how you say it, it's a top online learning destination with thousands of courses. Around the world, we're helping people achieve their goals. I learned Python and became a software engineer. Udemy can help you start a new career. Or just learn something new. Whatever you want to learn, discover the perfect course for your goal. Udemy. 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 What have you always wanted to learn? You've been working from home, but your roommate just took up percussion as a hobby. You need to drum up a new job quick and get out of here. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. An Indeed resume is more than a resume. It makes it easy to personalize your job search and even helps the right job find you. I see you're willing to relocate for work. Yes. game has never been better. 
That is hockey. Over the years, Western Carolina has sent many players to the NFL, and since the mid-90s, five former Catamounts have played in the Super Bowl, or at least been on Super Bowl rosters. The most recent, the gentleman on the far left, Keon Crossan, when the Patriots played the Rams in Atlanta. But that's quite a legacy, especially over the past roughly 25-plus years. Keon Crossan with the Pats, the late Tony Jones with the Broncos. He was the first Super Bowl champion out of Western Carolina. And the late David Patton Sr. was on those good Patriots teams earlier in the century. He and Brad Hoover, of course, squared off in the Super Bowl in Houston yep. when it was the Pats and the Panthers. But really a neat tidbit for Western Carolina football. Here we go in the second quarter. Catamounts did get a first down on that Williams run. Davis trying to answer Furman over the middle and oh. intercepted. Hugh Ryan with the pick. Might be a house call. Room to return. Might be a house call. And Ryan all the way back, close to the 10. Might have given him forward progress inside of it. So here's a, here's a situation where the quarterback was just a little too confident in his ability. Again, he could have stepped up in the pocket, probably ran the football, but he tries to put it right in between two defenders. And I didn't like the fundamentals when he threw the football. He, he didn't have his feet set. You know, he was kind of trying to do a jump pass and, and, and lay the football in there instead of putting it right on a rope. you got to put it right on a rope if you're going to try to get it in between two defenders. But again, Pete, fantastic job by this firm in defense, winning the turnover battle. They've been winning the special teams battle in the first quarter. Now they start the second quarter with a big turnover. Can they really apply pressure here um, and go up, you know, two touchdowns uh, early in the first half? And you saw the ball get loose late, but they'll say that Ryan was already down. So that bad part of the story continues for Davis, his 12th interception. And there's Devin James for Hugh Ryan, who's tied with Gilby coming in with the team leading tackles, his second pick of the year. Paladins now have 10 as a team. And again, you know, he, he's, he's not shot. And, and you want a quarterback that's, that's very confident and aggressive in his ability. It's just that you've got to protect the football in the big games. But he felt like he could get the ball there, and that's why he threw it. Paladins trying to increase their lead. Oh, And James looking for room, lowers his shoulder, gets close. And he came up about a yard, half a yard shot. I thought he was in there, Pete. I mean, I love the, the second effort. Love seeing the big guys up front kind of pushing the pile to get him over the goal line. You see here on the replay, he's just running behind his pass. Guys arm tackling. Thought he might have been in on that one because I thought he was laying on top of the defender. His body wasn't on the ground yet. He did get a first down. Direct snap, Roberto. And... Wow, they call no it a vacation yet. So they tried a wildcat, Roberto, looking to score his third touchdown of the day. And he came up shy. It'll be second and goal. Interesting. See right here, does he, is he laying on top of a player? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they should have reviewed that one. He was laying on top of a defender. He that was, was never on down. The previous uh, snap. Once again, Roberto and the wildcat. And Roberto this time, punching it in. It's the Roberto show. I mean, this is his third touchdown of the day. You've seen him take it from 62 yards out, and now you see the direct snap to Roberto in the one-yard line, punching it in. You see that toughness right there, Pete, being able to run in between the tackles, put his head down. Look at the big boys up front, playing low, flat back, coming out, feet moving. Boom, bow, bam. Touchdown for me. Seven rushing touchdowns now in the season. He got his first receiving score in the opening quarter. He's accounted for all the points, at least getting into the end zone. And the pro with his third extra point of the afternoon. The Paladins open the lead to 14 points. 21 to 7, our score early second quarter on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Every adventure is the road that got you there. Behind every passion are the tools that make it happen. And behind every Ford truck and SUV is a Carolina Ford dealer going the extra mile, finding the vehicle you're looking for. It's our commitment to your journey. That's what it means to be true blue. 
New inventory is arriving daily. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, go to buyfordnow.com or see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Jewelry has always been the most powerful gift of love, whether it's an engagement or an anniversary. Here at Hales, we're in the business of celebrating your life's most special moments from the past, the present, and the future. Being Greenville's oldest business means we understand you are only as good as how you feel when you leave the store. We welcome you to visit our flagship jewelry store. Happily ever Hales. This is no sleepy-headed, moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. Living with joint pain isn't easy, but lately dealing with it has felt even harder. So you've been putting up with it. That stops today. Today you stand up for yourself and say enough, and we solve it. Because we have the solutions to get you back on your feet. You're ready. It's your time. Visit bondsupport.com slash ortho to make an appointment and get started with your joint replacement today. Bond Secor, healthcare for the universe of you. That touchdown set up by the Hugh Ryan interception. Paladins have been doing a great job forcing turnovers this season. Came into the ball game tied with Southern Utah for most of the nation. They now force 17. On the flip side, it has been a big issue for Kerwin Bell's Western Carolina Catamounts at the bottom of FCS, and that is now turnover number 19 for the Cats this year. And again, it's hard to win football games if you don't if, if you turn the football over. You know, most teams that are really successful, especially they have that program established, they take good care of the football. They rarely have penalties and they rarely have turnovers. And, and right now we're seeing a Western Carolina team that's doing a lot of turnovers and they're, and they're creating a lot of penalties. But the good thing is, Pete, their, their offense is so um, advanced and elite, I think that they can still get back into this thing. Plenty of time left here in the second quarter, plenty of time left in the game. And they've got a quarterback and an offense that can put points up on the board. So, again, I think, you know, the, the Western Carolina team, they have to just come out, get back on plan, get back on script, and uh, fight their way back into this thing. Horn out of the 32. And the direct snap, second time words for Roberto. Three touchdowns. And he's, he's been bringing the wood when he's running the football. Davis and the Catamounts coming off that rough game at Mercer last week. They saw the Bears get six first half touchdowns and route to the 49-6 win. Jones the carry. If you're just joining us and you follow Western Carolina, Desmond Reed, who's really made an impact as a freshman, has injured both ankles in recent games. He did not make the trip. Underneath pass, it was intended for Horn, batted down. And again, I think, you know, where he was trying to go with the football was in double coverage again. You know, not sure if he saw the defender, but where he's trying to go with the ball, there was already two defenders closing in right there on Horn. Jack Barton getting a hand on it for Furman. So third down. Probably did him a favor that ball got knocked down. Catamounts two for four so far in the game. Davis steps up. Room, first down into Paladin's territory, and he lowers his shoulder. No sliding for him. No. Ran right into Yates first, and then Cam Brinson. And he's got to be able to do more of that instead of trying to put the football in a dangerous spot. Again, pocket is opening up right in front of him. Boom, you see all this green grass. You're athletic. Utilize that athleticism, okay? Very few people on this firm in defense are probably going to be able to catch you, okay? And so you've got to be able to do things like this to keep the drive alive and, again, get back into that tempo, get back into, um, you know, the script of plays that you have to get back into this ball game. From the 39, first and 10. Play action. Nice. Raphael Williams on the slant. And another first down for the Catamounts. And what he's doing, Pete, when he gets the football, he's, he's handing it to the fullback or to the running back. 
during that mesh, he's reading to see what the defense is doing. That defense, that those outside linebackers, if they step up, he's going right over their heads, right behind them to Roth Williams or someone in the slot position. And this time, T.J. Jones. Catamounts on their opening series threatened. Looked like they might have a TD on a pass from Davis to Jalen Williams, but after review of the call that Williams did not possess while inbounds was upheld, they tried a field goal. That was blocked. Furman quickly took the lead and has been in front for most of this afternoon. And that time, a really nice laser to David White, the 6'4 junior, transferred in from Valdosta And State. again, this is just the RPO game. Again, looking to the right side, reading what the defense is doing. They step in, trying to respect the run. Boom, he's going right over their heads. And deflected. Great job by Yates. Second time that Yates has knocked the ball down in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's playing a good job. I don't think he's gotten trucked yet like some of these other guys have. So he's, he's probably feeling pretty good about that. But, hey, this Western Carolina offense, again, RPO game strong. He gets inside position. You kind of want to throw that ball a little bit higher to the face mask of the receiver, give him a better opportunity uh, to, to bring that one in. But again, I like how Western's coming down on this drive, trying to claw their way back into the football game. Second and goal. They'll hand it to Jalen Williams, some power running. Yates lost a helmet off the screen, so he'll have to leave the field. Williams gets down to the four to bring up third down and goal. Catamount's team, lower half of the SoCon and red zone offense, and they came in having converted touchdowns on fewer than half of their opportunities. And Paladin player is down. If someone's hurt, yell at me. Trying to get a look. Yeah, if someone's hurt, just let me know. We have made that mistake before. Seth Johnson, the senior out of Chattanooga. Offensive lineman for this Furman team. We've seen it today. We knew it would be the case coming in, and it's been the case throughout the year. They have been playing a bunch of guys. Clay Hendricks will tell you they're playing about 25 guys a game defensively. He thinks that's a big reason why they've been so good in forcing turnovers, why they've been unscored upon in the fourth quarter. And he says it makes guys practice differently. Let's see how the injury happened to Johnson, who's being helped off the field. I don't know what happened. He got slung down by the offensive lineman. And Clay Hendricks <laughs> coached Air Force. He was an assistant at Air Force in the Mountain West Conference for a decade before returning to guide his alma mater. He said he noticed that New Mexico and later San Diego State, where Rocky Long was the head coach at both stops, he just remembers guys coming in waves defensively. And he really liked that philosophy of playing deep. And it keeps players energized. Players who may be second or third in the depth chart, they know they're going to see significant snaps in a game. And again, back to the part about practicing differently. They practice with a better focus. Look at them load up the right side on third and goal from the four. Catamounts. Well They'll start. hand it off. Penalty marker thrown. I think this one's coming back. False start. Push that thing back. But, yeah, to your point, Peter, anytime you're able to have depth at any position, especially at defensive line, especially as physical as this Furman team plays as, um, it, it's going to be important to make sure um, you know, that you have fresh bodies, Illegal talented formation. bodies. Offense, more than five in the back for that penalty is declined. So Furman declined the penalty, as you would understand. And it'll bring up a decision for Kerwin Bell. Yeah, just trying to get too cute here. And then the center didn't even snap the ball on time. I'm kind of surprised Kerwin Bell wouldn't be thinking, try to get into the end zone here, but he's looking for points instead. So we'll see McCollum, his first field goal attempt of the day, you'll recall, was blocked just a couple minutes into the ball game after the Catamounts threatened to score first in this contest. Nine of ten on field goal tries coming in. And essentially from extra point distance. And the Catamounts get three points back. An 11-point ball game, second quarter on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Red Riding Hood loved visiting Grandma's house. Unfortunately, others did too. But after saving big with early holiday deals at Amazon, 
she was ready for those uninvited guests. Who's a good boy? Apparently the big bad wolf. is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one mindset. Get a win. Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just got to keep doing that. That's exactly what we want to do right there. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. Thousands of games, including the one you want. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. So Western Carolina able to come away with three points after Furman had opened up the 14-point advantage. 21-10 our score. Paladins... All time in the series, trying for a 35th win. Catamounts have picked up 13 victories so far, including last year. And Western Carolina trying to win here at Paladin Stadium for the first time since 2014. Yeah, and again, a lot of football left. And, you know, West Carolina's offense, they've got the, the firepower to really get back in the, into this thing. I think that's why Coach Bell didn't go for it on fourth down, wanted to take the points, understands the positioning of position he's in uh, in this game. But, hey, this West Carolina defense, they've got to step up. they got to come to the party, man, because, you know, right now we're looking at a, uh, a running back in Dominic Roberto who's had three touchdowns so far, and there's still a lot of football left to play in this game. So um, they need to get it together in West Carolina's defense because if not, um, it doesn't matter how good their offense is. If they can't slow down this Furman offense, it's going to be a long day. Kick is away by Robertson. And it'll be returned. Anderson. Uh oh. Looking for room. And out across the 30. Ran over his own teammate <laughs> to get an additional five or six yards. And Furman's offense going back to work. Yeah, nice, nice run back here. Kind of setting up the wall. You don't see that as much anymore. Boom, truck is on. Hey, everybody's getting truck in. They, they, they must be studying trucking over here in Furman. Because this is like the fifth guy we've seen truck today. Number six, Tyler Huff. First season, grad transfer from Presbyterian. Been an interesting year for him during the summer. He was married. And he's also a second lieutenant in the Army Reserve. So this being Military Appreciation Day here at Furman, maybe a little bit extra special. The guy wearing number six for the Paladins. Play action and intended Ooh. for his favorite target, Ryan Miller. Well, I'll tell you, Ryan Miller knew that safety was somewhere in the neighborhood. You can just tell by how he was... He tried to extend for that ball, but he was not <laughs> he was not trying to get blasted. He saw that safety coming, was like, I love you, but I'm not I'm not risking my health for this uh <laughs> for this first down. Cause you know, you've seen a lot of football Pete back in the day. Um, you know, those safeties would just take out receivers coming across the middle like that. Roberto out across the forty. Just Four passes, for five passes thrown so far, far by Huff. They've been able to live off of the groundwork of Roberto and also Devin James. Pounders have thrown for just 23, but have 140 yards so far on the ground. Let's see what they do. On third down, they're 0 for 1 so far today. And a third and five upcoming. Huff with time. Back nice. time, he connects with Miller. You see, Miller knew where the safety was. He was on his 
he was right behind him. He had inside position. So, yeah, he was able to fully extend uh, for that reception to keep the drive alive. But great job by the offensive line creating a nice pocket, you know, for Huff to really be able to feel comfortable and be able to look down the field and find his receivers that he thinks can win a matchup. See if this comes back, though. There is a marker down. Mateo Sudipo. Coastal Carolina on the tackle for the Catamounts. Here's Michael Farmer, our referee. And now to the player downfield. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Kendall Dean is number 11. He's a wide receiver, but in this case, they rule him to be ineligible. So Maybe he was, co he was covered up. Covered up. That's the only thing I can think. He's covered up. He's not on the right. Let's see. Yep. Top of your screen. He's in the slot, I believe. Yeah. He's in the slot. He has to be off the ball if the outside receiver is on the ball. That's Pee Wee football, Pete. Come on. So make it third and ten. Pressure. Huff, we told you he likes to run, trying to get to the nice. marker. And I believe he got the distance again. And you see the toughness that he has. You know, he knows where that first down marker is. He knows he wants to keep the drive alive. Big game, big moment. Not afraid to, you know, put it out there for his teammates. And his teammates see that, and they appreciate that. You love seeing your quarterback, you know, have that kind of grit, tough mentality. Um, reminds me of Mitch Allen, my quarterback back at Walford. Just a tough guy willing to take any hit for the team. He took the hard hit. First carry of the day for the Paladins, Kendall Thomas. And thrown to the ground by the guy who just hit Huff out of bounds, Va. Leale Matafau for Western Carolina. See, they're pulling the tight end around, being able to get back upfield. You know, you talk to your running backs about that all the time. Quit all this dancing, going east and west. Get north and south. Get upfield. Put your foot in the ground. Get upfield. Get positive yards. Mm. Again, they go to Thomas, and again, Western Carolina ready. And now Western Carolina, they're bringing in that extra safety into the box who's filling that alley, and he, again, he's the extra guy. He's coming unblocked right here into your screen, boom, making that big tackle. No one even touched him, okay? He's an extra body to the box. So now, if you're firm as offense, the counter that you've got to take the ball down the field. You've got to find a matchup on the outside, challenge those receivers, win your matchup so we can spread the football out. Again, the scramble by Huff. Oh! Stays in play, gets the first down and then some. Tyler Huff, again, being able to keep the play and the drive alive by using his feet. My only question, though, Pete, is, is Western Carolina secondary that good covering down the field, or is he just not quite confident yet in his receivers or his ability to get the football down the field, which is why he's trying to utilize his legs so much? So that's the question that needs to be answered. That went for 21 yards. He had the 11-yard carry earlier. He'll keep. Takes the throw, and he's forced out of bounds. See, I think, I think, quite frankly, P, I think West Carolina's defensive backs and their secondary, I think they're really strong. And I think they're doing a really good job of covering down the field. And, you know, the, the, sec, the, the linebackers in the defensive line, they've got to do a better job of, of breaking down that pocket and containing the quarterback so he can't get out like that and get these big chunk plays. Paladins trying to add to this 11-point lead. They had two 11-point advantages in the second half last year. We're losing by a point in Cullowy. Roberto, and it'll be third down and short. We see this defensive line, they're thinking about Roberto. They're thinking about these running backs trying to slow them down, and they're, they're forgetting about the quarterback. So if they can really put it together, it should really help them kind of slow down this Furman offense so, they're, so West of Carolina's offense can really help get this thing back going. Paladins have converted the past two third downs on 32 yards of rushing combined by their quarterback. And Huff, Roberto with the hole on the left side. Inside the 15, another first down. Yeah, he's feeling good. To, he's feeling good. You can tell, Pete, he's running with a vengeance. He just has a, a different mentality than anyone else on the field. And that offensive line is doing a fantastic job again, just running right downhill. Offensive linemen are doing a great job getting to the second level. 
creating nine, those openings. Nine carries, 107 yards in the opening half for Roberto. Looking for more, but that time they do a nice job stretching him out. Jalen Floyd, a grad transfer from Lehigh out of South Florida, leading the way. Yeah, they had two pulling linemen right there, and, and, and Roberto just was a little impatient. I would have liked to see him kind of, you know, run with a little more patience. Let those big fellas get out in front of you and create a space for you. As you see here on the replay, they got two big boys coming. He gets out in front of them. You know, we're us big guys aren't as fast as the running back, Pete. So we got to, it takes us a little bit, half a second longer to really get to that block. Right there, boom. play action, Miller, touchdown. Nice. And that was all set up by the run game. Again, that those linebackers, they got their eyes in the backfield. They're so locked into Roberto, thinking he's going to get the football. Then Miller's able to get the inside position and slip right behind them. Nice pass by the quarterback. And just a simple, great, confident pass that you can ask your quarterback to make. He's going to make that 10 out of 10 times. Nice job by the Paladin offensive unit. Six TD catch of the season for Miller. He leads the Furman team in the key receiving categories. LaPro hits the upright, and it's no good. 27 to 10, our score remains. 5.55 to go in the second quarter. Most drivers spend their lives going from point A to B. In America, we're all about point X. That's why our most versatile BMW X-Range vehicles are proudly manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X-Range, your next X-Venture, starts here. Receive $1,500 lease models now through October 31st. Nobody from nowhere, never going to happen to your dreams, kid. 100 to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. Nachos, better with Pepsi. This is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. It's bow time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bose chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender, even a chicken wants to eat it. Larry, people are trying to eat! Furman building on its lead on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week, presented by Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. With Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity here at Paladin Stadium. So the Furman Paladins, a scoring drive, 11 plays, 65 yards. The touchdown to Miller, but the guy who threw it to him, his legs were a big story as well. Absolutely. Tyler Huff, again, you know, didn't like what he was seeing down the field and, and making a play, keeping the play alive with his legs, you know, forcing West Carolina to have to respect that side of his athletic ability. And then once again, you know, they were able to tap into you know, the respect that uh, Dominic Roberto has earned and being able to throw the football because he, they've been able to establish the run game so well. So I'll tell you, Furmans, they, they're, they're rocking and rolling right now here in the first half. Ian Williams has been a touchback machine for Furman on kickoffs since arriving from NC State. Getting close to 30 on the year. That's another one this afternoon. So the Catamounts now with just under six to play and the ability to move the ball quickly will go to work at their own 25. Well, they definitely need to put some points on the board. I'm talking the touchdown, not a field goal here, because obviously Furman's offense is rocking and rolling. You know, they nothing seems to be slowing them down. Um, but Western Carolina, they've got to put a touchdown on the board before getting into the half. 
Davis over the middle, in stride, he's got his man, and in a sprint, David White. White had to get past Michael Ooh. Robinson, and he does, and just like that, 75 yards in an instant, and the Catamounts Ooh, saying he's another too score. Little. He's saying he's too little for me. He's saying he's too little on me. I like it. I like it. Again, great read. Just winning the matchup. Gets inside position. Corner just not nowhere close. And then you just see the burners. I bet you, I bet you White ran track in, in, in high school. Being able to put on the burners like that. Came to them out of the Jacksonville area. Oh, he's from Florida? Oh, say began less. His, began his career at Valdosta State. He arrived in the spring, and he's one of the guys that Kerwin Bell pointed out this week as to somebody that they want to see further emerge in their passing game. He had 16 receptions over the first six games and a big TD oh! and another block by Furman. And here is Robinson trying to get his revenge. He can go for two, but he's forced out of bounds. Oh, good recovery by the holder. Another big play on a block by Brandon Dickerson, this time the tackle. Meanwhile, back in the area of where the ball was blocked, the officials may have something to discuss. We'll set that up on the other side of this timeout. For now, 27-16 Furman on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart-pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. Thousands of games, including the one you want. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. This time could be up there with the greatest of times. And it starts now. You got to be kidding me! never been better that is hockey the game has never been better that is hockey While we were away, there was a penalty on Furman on that first block of the extra point try, a roughing the snapper. So Richard McCollum given another opportunity, and he converts. So it's a 10-point game at 27 to 17, getting ready for another high-scoring affair, just like they had in Cullowee a year ago when Furman and Western Carolina went back and forth and back and forth as Jalen Williams had a big ball game 
as did others. Rogan Wells was a quarterback a year ago for the Catamounts. He threw for nearly 400 yards in the game and a couple of touchdowns. And Western Carolina rallied a couple of 11-point deficits. Kerwin Bell was ringing the victory bell when all was <laughs> said and done in a 43-42 win for the Cats against the Paladins. Here they are now trying to come from a couple of scores down in the opening half and get themselves a first win here at Furman since 2014. And again, Pete, a lot of football left. Uh, only a 10-point game in West Carolina's offense, as you as you saw in the last drive. You know, they can strike from any position on the field and, and take it to the house. So it's going to be a, a nice second half. It's going to be interesting what adjustments West Carolina makes on their defensive side of the ball uh, to try to slow down this run game that Furman's been able to really take advantage of here in the first half. Well, Furman gets the ball to start the second half. See, if you're the Catamounts, you've got your three timeouts left, so do the Paladins. And you're probably thinking, try to get a stop, maybe add points before the half in this 50th all-time meeting. Paladins go for the 35th win. Remember back in the 80s, Western Carolina, they played for a national title in 83. Furman was building under Dick Sheridan and Jimmy Satterfield on their way to playing for two and winning one national championship. And this was a really good series with the late Bob Waters, the gold standard of head coaches at Western Carolina leading the Catamounts. It'll be second down for the Paladins. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that, Pete. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't there. Perhaps reading up uh, in <laughs> past lore during your SOCON days. Now, I tell you, Weston and Furman, two great programs in the, from the SOCON. A lot of great talent over the years. A lot of great traditions. Second and seven. And once again, Paladin's trying to get something between the tackles. Devin Abrams has stopped. And Furman team that got Ryan Miller, who's closing in on 45 catches on the year, involved on the previous series, and he capped off the drive with a TD. But a couple of uh, runs to set up a third and five. They need someone else besides Miller on the outside to really, you know, help complement the run game. Right now, you know, Miller's the only, you know, really receiver threat. Um, they, they need more from their receivers. And Huff looking, and nice. he finds his receiver, Joshua Harris, second leading receiver on the team, makes a nice catch reaching back. That's what they need more of. They need more guys on the outside who can make plays to help open up this offense uh, because we know that Furman can run the football, you know, and we know that they can score running the football from anywhere on the field, but they need the receivers to really step up to complement the run package. Paladins, four of five on third down. Roberto. Oof. Lands hard on that Furman logo at midfield, but a nice first down carry. I mean, they are just throwing moving bodies out the way on that on those uh, the offensive line right now for Furman. Just moving people out the way. Love it. So it'll be second down and three, and under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Paladins trying to regain the momentum. I mean, heck, Furman's put up almost 30 points in the first half. Into the ball game, averaging less than that per contest. Let's see if this makes it second and a little bit longer. I know some teams they don't. It takes them, you know, half a season to, to total up 30 points, but they're able to do it in the first half over here. Ball Furman. Start. Offense. Two. Five. Evan Jumper apparently did just that. <laughs> the center. <laughs> Come on, center, you can't you can't mess up the snap. You know the snap count. That's one thing I've never did, Pete. I never messed up the snap count. Now I might have had a holding penalty. I might have had an unsportsmanlike penalty, but never had a false start penalty as a center. Showing a little Ooh. bit of option and a spin by Huff. Eventually taken down in the secondary by Taurus Dotson, but boy, showing you some moves again is the Furman QB. Hey, a little razzle dazzle right there on the on the replay coming at you with little, little option on. Oh, not only did he did the fake pitch, who was that, number eight, number eight? He fake pitched number eight, and then number eight just stood there. What you standing there for? Go make a play. Loyale Matafau, the linebacker who hit him hard earlier. That time, Huff gets a measure of revenge. Just standing around. First and 10 inside the 40. Buy Roberto. a ticket. Building on Ooh, his first push half. It, push the pile, get in there. 12th carry for Roberto, and he's 
at the 120 yards rushing mark. Remember a year ago, he ran for nearly 200 in that shootout up in Cullowick. And that wasn't a career high, I believe, Pete. I think that was just a, another day in the office. Yeah. <laughs> Had a career high of over 200 yards against Samford in a road game. So give him five, second down and five. Albans looking to add on to this 27-17 advantage. And this time it's Abrams. 216 yards to be exact in that contest against Sanford. Big third down. Can can Western win this third down and you know force Furman to have to think about whether or not they're gonna go for it on fourth down or kick a long field goal? Third down and short. Paladins have been good in this situation so far. Why well, the slot receivers so that uncovered? Abrams hits. Oh, nice. Didn't get it. Nice. Boy, really good recognition. And now finally the whistles. I'm surprised they didn't just throw the ball to the slot receiver. I mean, he, the corner was, you know, giving him so much cushion for just a third and short situation. Darius Gwynn among those in there. Catamounts will use a timeout. Coach Hendrick has some time to think about it. I think he goes for it. I think you're at a point in the field. You've obviously established a run game. You've shown a little option. You've got different different formations. You can kind of finesse right now um, to throw Western Carolina's defense off. I think he goes for it, and he keeps it real simple. Run, runs the football inside, outside zone play, keep the drive alive, and trying to get another touchdown before halftime. Playing Furman this year, it's almost like facing a baseball team where you want to score before the seventh inning because their bullpen is so good. Paladins, mind you, have not allowed a point in the fourth quarter. And that's not only against the teams they face like Charleston, Southern, North Greenville, and the SoCon foes, but that was against Clemson and Death Valley. They did not allow a final quarter point against a team that's number four in the nation and a power five ball club on the FBS level. So they will go for it, and it's going to be a direct snap. They scored a touchdown on the Roberto direct snap earlier. This time oh! he needs about the same distance, and let's see. Forward progress. I think you got that one. All right, line up. Let's get up. Get. They've yet to move the change. Kerwin Bell is pleading his case. We've not gotten the indication yet. Boy, it's it, that's close, though, Pete. If he got it, it's, it's going to be just by an inch. I mean, I think everyone in the stadium knew who was going to get the football, what they were going to do with it. Chad Scales, the first-year defensive coordinator for the Catamounts, has come in and done a nice job with this Catamounts defense. And one of the things he's been able to do is make them play more aggressively. So we will get a measurement. Coach Bell's been hot all first half. He's been hot this whole first half. But he has a right to. I think, you know, if you think about it, he Look feels that they should be down one touchdown. I mean, Andreas it should be Keaton, up one touchdown. Number, number 21 was already making the call before they even measure. Let's see if he's right. And I do oh. believe Huff pleading his case. Kerwin Bell his. He's short. And short by inches. So it turns out that Andreas Keaton had a very good view. <laughs> 91 <laughs> fail. <laughs> Too much of a celebration for Gwyn, the defensive lineman. Hey, you better be careful with that one because, you know, some defense linemen get hurt. But, hey, great job again by the big guys just stuffing it. It could have been a face mask right there. But Mateo Sudipo didn't make the first hit, but the safety stepped up and made contact. So the Catamounts get it back with 138 to go. They still have a couple of timeouts in their back pocket. And, you know, mind you, they can move the ball in a hurry. Real quick. That today. A huge stand. Paladins had been five out of nine on fourth downs for the Catamounts, second best in the SOCON in fourth down defense. They showed it right there. And I put that on the offensive line. I don't put that on the running back. Okay, as an offensive line unit, if your coach challenges you and says, hey, we need to get one yard. If you can't get one yard on fourth and one, I mean, I just don't understand that. In the flat, catch is made, and 
One yard, Pete. That's all you need. You just need one yard. Just move a guy out the way for one yard. I just don't understand that. A.J. Bellinger with the catch. Yates was right there to make the hit. Davis, second down and short. Nice. Make a good decision. Get out of bounds. Oh, flat. Hit hard as he headed on out of bounds. Wow. And let's see. Alex Mayer with the hit by Furman at that Western Carolina sideline. Thought that should have been a flag, Pete. Clearly he's going out of bounds. Clock will stop as they move the chains. That's some home cooking right there. Now he could have sold it. He should have just, you know. And usually when it goes into your team's sideline, you'll more times than not get the flag, but that's not the case. So it's a first and 10. The play marker at the chains did not properly shift. It's showing second down. That may be the reason for the whistle. Or is it second and short? Now you see the line judge telling the marker, gentleman who's operating that, to go ahead and make the flip. And that's the case, so they'll try it again on first and ten. Catamount's trying to get a little bit closer. And as this game goes on, you have to wonder if the Hugh Ryan interception that set up the TD that made it a two-score game could prove to be as big of a play in this contest. From a firm and defensive standpoint, in the flat, there's Raphael Williams. Told you he's so good at running routes, he was wide open, and Davis found him. Wide open, and again, great protection by the big boys up front. You see the tempo right now. And they can score at any point of the field, but great protection, able to survey the entire field, find his favorite receiver, understand that they were playing a deep zone. And he was able to find that nice cushion, that nice window, and sit home, creating a big, Big play right there for this Western Carolina offense. 17 yards, fourth catch of the game for the top receiver for this Western Carolina offense. So here they are in Paladin's territory, still better than a minute to play before the half. Might have been a design quarterback. Oh, working out for Davis, first down and inside nice. the 25. Nice play. I think you're right, P. I think that was a design right there. I think that was all, you know, set up from the get go. He was going to run it the whole time. Nice pump fake to get the defense going one direction and able to go back the other way uh, where there was a lot of green grass. Carlos Davis goes 14 yards, leads Western Carolina with 75, make it 80 now on eight carries. Handing off Jones, Oof. haven't seen him touch the ball in a while, and he weaves down close to the 20. And the Catamounts will use the timeout with 54 seconds remaining. And they're rolling right now, Pete. You see a confidence right now by the offensive line. They're, they're, they're given a good pocket. Quarterbacks making good decisions. And they're able to move down the field here late in the second quarter to try to cut this thing down to three. Again, I, I think Coach Bell has to feel really good about what he's seeing. Again, pump fake, boom, utilizing his legs. And he's one of the most athletic guys on the field, making plays. You see that toughness and that tempo. Again, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, get the next play called, see what the defense is in, find your matchup, and then, you know, allocate the football to the, the matchup that you feel more favorable about. Really like what I'm seeing about this group. I think they have a lot of potential to come back and make a big comeback here in this game. Total yards, Catamounts 355 with about a minute to go in the second quarter. Paladins 279 yards. Furman with a short field to work with on one of its scores after the Ryan interception. In this ball game, each team has a touchdown of at least 62 yards. The Roberto run for Furman, the white reception of 75 for the Catamounts. Second down. See if they try to take a shot. Another quarterback draw. Another first down for Davis. Mm. All the way inside the five. See here the replay. Guy. Has an extra blocker utilizing the, the running back as an extra blocker. He's just bigger, stronger, faster than anyone else right now. And just, you know, able to push his way down the field with a quarterback draw. Williams slung down. Clock winding, coming up on half a minute to go in the second quarter. It'll be second and goal, Kerwin Bell. 
keeping that final time out in his pocket. Just love this right here, Pete. Just so tough, taking multiple guys to get him down. Davis, play action, end zone. Oh, bad throw. Threw it a little bit too low. He was trying to get it to Jalen Williams. He saw he, he saw the, the matchup. He liked Actually the born. matchup. And again, just didn't put enough on it right there, Pete. Terrence Horn, the intended target. It does stop the clock, though, with 19 seconds left. So even if you don't get a touchdown here, you can still make it a closer game. game, a seven-point game. Yep. Pull within a, and, and the thing is, Pete, he can't make, he can't force anything. If it's not there, you know, throw it away. Don't take a sack. You know, don't force it. Davis trying to run. Red beautifully. Tackle for loss. Jack Barton. Call timeout. Call timeout. Kick a field goal. Again, not a bad play. All right. I mean, it wasn't a touchdown as they hoped for. First sack of the year for Barton. 14th for the Paladins team. Four seconds to go. And let's see if they go for the field goal to try to make it a one possession game or keep the offense out there for one final shot at the end zone. I, I, you know, I'd be really shocked. I don't think they're going to go for it here on fourth and ten. I think they're going to try to, you know, make sure, make it a seven-point game, which is the right play. You know, the right play is to go for the field goal and, and try to cut this thing down to seven and go into halftime and, and try to find a way to make some adjustments to come out here in the second half. Really lost this season to Samford, the red zone, a big issue for this Catamounts team. And, of course... The difficulty that Davis has had with the interceptions, those have been a haunting experience in the red zone as well. Catamounts came in at the start of the day. They'd scored 11 touchdowns on the year in 26 trips. Going to try another field goal. You remember on their opening drive of the game, they marched down near the Paladins' goal line. Sent McCollum out there to try to hit a short field goal, less than 30 yards. That was blocked. Here, his attempt of roughly 27 yards. As he tried the first time, high, high snap. snap. The kick is good, mm. and that's how we close out the opening half of action. Great what fun we've had so far. The scoring, as we expected, has been abundant. And after Furman jumped out to a quick 21 to 7 advantage, we head to halftime in a seven-point game. 27 to 20, Paladins lead on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Say cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Cop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And by switching, you could even save $652. Thank you, Liberty Mutual. Now, contestants ready? Go! Oh, only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart-pounding atmosphere. 
atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. Thousands of games, including the one you want. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. Halftime here at Paladin Stadium. The Furman Paladins, a 27 to 20 lead on the Catamounts of Western Carolina on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. It's been a shootout so far and should be quite the second half. So welcome you back into the booth and joined by Chris Bainbridge. You see him at halftime. Usually we've got you on tape doing the Ingalls Open Road, All which right. are just some of the coolest segments that I've seen. Man. It, it's just really neat. You've taken us to so many great places this season. It's been really fun. We're coming up on our 100th episode, believe it or not, and uh, it's been a really fun ride all the way along, all thanks to Ingalls. Um, you know, this whole thing started at the heart of the pandemic when really the only thing open was grocery stores and uh, really is just a, a gift to the communities they call home. They decided to start showing people what was out there that they could get out and go do during a pandemic and uh, at the same time try to shine a light on some local businesses that really needed the help and attention. And then throughout the course of the last couple of years, we've been able to get out and go to just some amazing places. We were just talking about uh, the Land of Oz that we went up to in Banner. The Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, and so uh, we've got some, uh, some fun stuff coming up for our 100th episode here in just a Ooh, couple of weeks. A teaser. Really looking forward to that. We're going to see it on one of our half times. You got it. Up. Uh, Ingalls is getting ready for the holiday season, and I know you get to experience a lot of that like we all do, but it, it's exciting times at Ingalls Markets. You're able to get around uh, the area and, and emphasize really the great scenery and, and the great events and the great scenes, but at Ingalls, uh, I know it's a great experience whenever anyone walks in. Absolutely, and coming up, I, you know, you might have heard this little Halloween, Halloween holiday coming up, and uh, they've got a really awesome program going on right now in all of their upstate stores. The Boo Bag program, you can buy a $10 bag of candy uh, on the candy aisle, and all of the proceeds for that go to benefit Prisma Children's Hospital, supporting the hospital support animals. And so, I mean, just what a heart-filled thing to do for the community and, uh, and the kids at Halloween. That's a really great, the, the support animals has become a great program, and I know Ingalls is very honored and proud to be a part of that. For sure. Great cause. Uh, so on the open road at halftime segments, we'll look for you on the Ingalls open road. You've got some great segments coming up. Just in case anyone's watching and wants to throw an idea your way, they can just reach you through the Ingalls website, I would think. I'll tell you what, go to openroadshow.com. That's openroadshow.com. We'd love to hear your ideas. Yeah, and there are so many. And in this region, so many rich things going on and just, just little things you discover. But once you start telling stories about them, they're just yeah. so clean. It's a lot of fun and uh, excited to be out here today. Uh, a wonderful partnership between Ingalls, Furman, Western Carolina, and the SOCON. Uh, and I'm just yep. thrilled to be here and be a part of it. Fantastic. I know you are. And Chris Bainbridge, you see him on the Ingalls Open Road. Thanks so much for stopping by here at the half. And we'll continue on with halftime. Got a lot to talk about in the opening half and much more around the Southern Conference as well as we continue in a 27 to 20 game at the break. Sure, McDonald's breakfast is good. But getting that McDonald's breakfast two minutes before it stops being served, that tastes even better. With DirecTV, I can get live TV and on demand together. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Whoops. Oh, no. The housewives are on the field. I repeat, the housewives are on the field. I just want to 
Get your TV together. Call 1 800 Direct TV to save up to $120. MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. MLS Cup Playoffs. October 15th through the 30th. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. Eli, do they make Joe and Troy stand the entire time? Hey, what are you guys doing here? We're back for 10 more Monday nights. Yeah, well, we've got over 20 years of legendary calls together. We've got a secret handshake. Look, either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. The Mexico City Grand Prix! What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything that there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. Halftime continues at Paladin Stadium on this Military Appreciation Day as the Furman Paladins have a lead of seven points over the Catamounts of Western Carolina. The Furman Band has been entertaining the fans in a 27 to 20 ball game. Now around the Southern Conference over the past week plus, Jacob Sailors, you and I were up in Lexington last Saturday, Jared, when he went for nearly 200 yards. He was a big story in ETSU's first SOCON win of the year. Absolutely. I mean, he's really the, the workhorse for that ETSU offensive unit, and it was really fun to watch him last week up at VMI. And Sean Watson, now the interim head coach at Wofford, because a week ago Thursday, Josh Conklin resigning in his fifth season at the helm. Terriers have been in some uh, very difficult times of late. The Mercer Oof. Bears, they may be the team to beat. They've got a huge one against ETSU. They've also got Chattanooga coming up. So we're going to see how for real Mercer is in their quest for a first SOCON title over the next couple of weeks. But boy, Drew Cronick has built a nice team in Macon, Georgia. Let's check out the scoreboard and the aforementioned Wofford Terriers who began the day in a 16-game losing streak, second longest active in Division I. But look at that in their rivalry game against the Citadel trying to avenge last year's loss in Charleston. And Sean Watson and the Terriers, a 31-7 lead on the Bulldogs. Also going on right now, Chattanooga looking to stay unbeaten in the SOCON and they own a 38-14 advantage in the fourth quarter on VMI. And coming up, that ETSU-Mercer game, that should be a really good one in Macon. They will likely have a crowd of around 12,000 at Five Star Stadium for that battle between the Bears and the Bucks. Take another timeout, come back with a recap of this opening half in a 27-20 game in our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Give up the 
This time could be up there with the greatest of times. And it starts now. You can be kidding me! The 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. October 15th through the 30th. Thousands of games, including the one you want. That is hockey. Live NHL games from every team. Home and away games when you're away from home. That is hockey. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Plus. MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. You see the halftime ceremony continuing on Military Appreciation Day in Paladin Stadium. The home team, a 27 to 20 advantage on visiting Western Carolina. Welcome back in on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity. Combined nearly 650 yards of total offense to go with the 47 <laughs> points. I think that kind of tells the story. If you love offense, this has been a fantastic football game because you've seen it in the air, you've seen it on the ground. It's, it's just really been of all, all facets. So a um, lot of scoring. Lots of fun, lots of big plays, big moments. Should be a really good second half, Pete. Now, we thought Western Carolina would strike first. Catamounts marched downfield, looking really good, mixing the pass and the run. Eventually had an early field goal try blocked, second of the year for Furman special teams. But eventually, the Paladins got the ball and got going. Absolutely. And, I, and it took Western Carolina a while to kind of get, you know, from that moment of the blocked field goal to kind of get back into this football game. In the meantime, Furman was able to continue to stay on schedule, run the football extremely well, utilize their weapons on offense. You know, seeing a, a big first half from Dominic Roberto, three big touchdowns, but Western Carolina still was able to find a way uh, to, to make plays as Furman's defense was able to make some big turnovers as well in the first half. But again, Pete, been a lot of good offense running the football and through the air and some quick strikes as well by Western Carolina's offense. It's just been an offensive, uh, you know, clinic uh, here in the first half. Furman taking advantage of a Hugh Ryan interception of Carlos Davis to set up that last touchdown you saw as it was Miller on the receiving end from Huff. The numbers just show an offensive 
a raise so far. And interestingly, you mentioned Roberto at the 62-yard touchdown run. He's carried for 118 so far. Carlos Davis has 98 yards on the ground for Western Carolina. But the biggest thing to me, though, Pete, in that first half was the penalties. The penalties in the first half and the special teams play, I think, is why Western Carolina is down seven points here so far at halftime. So what adjustments are they going to make to try to slow down the run game for Furman? What adjustments is Furman going to do to try to slow down the, the tempo and passing attack of Western Carolina here in the second half? That's what's going to be critical. And who can clean up this game? Okay? That's going to be really critical here as we go into the, our SoCon game of the week presented by Ingles. Nice day to watch a game at Paladin Stadium. Second half is coming up. Rain-X premium silicone wiper blades last two times longer than traditional wipers. If Rain-X premium silicone wipers survive these conditions, clearly they'll last in yours. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Put a DR leaf and lawn back to work on your property. The DR rides behind your lawn tractor and inhales everything. Unloading takes just seconds. No lawn tractor, no problem. Our new Pilot XT models fill disposable bags for curbside pickup. Go online to drleafac.com to request your free product catalog. DR Leafacs are now on sale and free shipping is in effect. Hurry, this offer won't last. The 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 3rd. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one mindset. Get a win. Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just got to keep doing that. That's exactly what we want to do right there. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. Did you think you could relax? That you had seen everything there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. The Mexico City Grand Prix. Great <laughs> from Max Furman will get the ball to start our third quarter. Paladins trying to get to three and one in the Southern Conference and looking for a second straight win. They won down in Charleston last week. It was actually a big third quarter, which a couple of forced fumbles led to two touchdowns and opened up a, what had been a seven to three ball game in favor of Furman. And Western Carolina trying to get back to 500 in the SoCon. One and two when the day began. Anderson will field. Looking oh. for room, and he's got it. Across the 35-40, oh across midfield. 
one man to beat. Wayne Anderson takes it to the house. Wow. Wow, Pete. What a way to start the second half. It, you know, when I'm looking as this thing is, is developing, somebody's running out of their lane. Watch the, the, I mean, someone did not run their lane and created a wide open gap and he was able to exploit that. Fantastic job. And we talked about it, Pete. Special teams, special teams, special teams. Furman so far in this game in the first half, they had a big block in the first quarter. Now they have a touchdown back on the kickoff return. Who's going to win the special team side of the ball has a good chance of winning the football game. 97 yards on the run back, Wayne Anderson. And add that to this day with points and yards all over the place. The Paladin special teams denying a likely three earlier with the block field goal and now getting a quick six on the run back by Wayne Anderson. Yeah, again, just really good job being able to, you know, <laughs> see that thing develop. Not sure who on the on the uh, Western Carolina side did not run their lane, but that's what happens. That's why coaches always practice or preach that during practice. You got to stay in your lane when you run down the field, because if you if you don't, you're going to create a wide open space for a guy that's got a head start, and you're going to have to kick it or try to slow that down. Good luck. First kickoff return for a touchdown by the Paladin since Jawan Bell did it back in September of 2018. That was for 97 yards, and that came against the Catamounts of Western Carolina. So Wayne Anderson with folks just settling back in for the second half, helps the Paladins build the lead back out to 14. And Williams' kick again will sail into the end zone, another touchback. He's been a big weapon in that regard for them this year on kickoffs. Western Carolina, kind of ball game where they'll take two steps up, one step back, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, you think about it, Pete. Special teams has been that kind of Achilles heel today for this Western Carolina team. I mean, just look at it. I mean, nobody's in that hole. Great vision right there to be able to cut it back and take it to the house. How about that? First kickoff returned by the Paladins for a score in four years. Wayne Anderson. 97 yarders. So Carlos Davis, just like that, leads his team down by 14 once again. In the flat, Rafael Williams, and they get five. And again, that's a great way to start the second half. Get it to your playmakers. Get it to the you know, especially your superstar on offense. Kind of get him going early. As we noted. And it could be an important part of this game as it'll be third down upcoming. Quick reaction that time by Luke Clark for the Paladins out of Louisville, Kentucky on the Jones catch. See the offensive coordinator, Cade Bell. Yeah, his dad is Kerwin, the head coach. And Cade Bell and his dad have come into Cullowhee last season and brought the offensive formula for a potent attack. Looking to continue that. Had a rough go of it at Mercer last week, but the Bears have been playing really good defense. They managed under 250 yards of total offense. I think they were already at number in the opening half. Big reason for their success today, this guy with the ball in his hands and Carlos Davis, over 100 yards rushing on the afternoon, gets another first down. And really what you see there, they get everyone in tight, spread the formation out, see what the defense is in. And then again, they like the numbers inside. They like the fact that they have you know, more guys blocking than Furman has packed into the box because they have to respect those athletes. And when you see that, quarterback's able to make a play with his feet, pick up the first down. And room to run inside. T.J. Jones with Davis leading his team in rushing. Now 104 yards and 11 carries. Jones, his 10th attempt of the game, and he's near 50. And again, you don't have to do anything special. You know you're down 14 points. Just run your offense, stick to the plan, and try to continue to get yourself in these third and short situations. 
third and short, the whole playbook opens up at that point, Pete. You know, you got the quarterback draws, you have some zone, you know, you can throw it to the flash, you can take a shot downfield. Again, third and three, third and short, that's where you want to be if you're in offense. It gives you a better probability of converting those third down conversions. Davis just converted on a third down. Catamounts are four of eight on the afternoon. Find the matchup you like. If you don't like it, use your feet. That's what it'll do. Flag thrown behind him. That usually means holding. And let's see. Uh-oh. He's hurt. Remember, Davis got shaken up in the Georgia Tech game with a shoulder injury. That's impacted him since he actually missed a game. But you saw able to pop up and so the penalty is against the catamounts and here's michael farmer holding offense number 70 penalties declined fourth down frankly getting over to the sidelines right now might not be a bad thing for carlos davis let's see why he was shaken up he yeah, took a big hit right here all that pressure from the hit right on that right throwing shoulder yep. And again, he laid there for a few moments. And Furman did a great job. Played great defense right there. They played straight zone um, and sat back, kept everything in front, in front of him. So really good job by Furman's defense. You see kind of the um, adjustments that they made here at halftime, trying to keep everything in front, not getting beat deep. Wouldn't be surprised if they add kind of a, a spy on the quarterback so they can keep him in the pocket. Punt is away by Dickerson with some pressure, wind blowing from his right to left, and it'll go into the end zone as Braden Gilby at 237 pounds who applied the hit on Davis will keep an eye on his status as there is some throwing activity on the Catamount sideline. They trail by 14. It's bow time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bo's chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender, even a chicken wants to eat it. Larry, people are trying to eat! Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up, and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. When you buy a diamond from Hells, you're getting us. We know what it means to see a smile, to see that reaction when you get that engagement ring. And we take great pride in that stone being absolutely the most beautiful diamond it possibly could be. It's about the smile that it creates when someone opens that box. We've put our life and our soul in picking that diamond, especially for you. It really touches my heart that individuals at Ingalls treat you like family. They invest their love into you. They invest their business into you. And they give back to communities in rural areas like ours. I don't know exactly where family farmers like mine would be without Ingalls supermarkets. Well, is number nine, true freshman out of Ocala, Florida. That's him on the far end of the screen, getting loose on the sidelines. He's the backup quarterback for Western Carolina. We saw Carlos Davis get shaken up with the apparent right shoulder injury, which has been an issue, and he's now in that medical tent in the background. So we could see Gonzalez when Western Carolina goes back out on offense, and that could be a very big storyline, obviously, in this game. Well, absolutely. He's got a tall task in front of him. He's down 14 points. You know, he hasn't been in the game the whole whole time so he's, he's going to have to bring that energy to try to match um, what's needed for them to try to make a comeback here in the second half for now Tyler Huff and the Furman offense on the field for the first time in the second half despite the fact 
Cowdens have increased their seven point halftime advantage and the quick handoff and a burst of speed by Kendall Thomas. Of course, Wayne Anderson, the 97 yard run back of the third quarter kick to throw the lead to 14. Thomas, the speedster out of their backfield while Roberto and Abrams bring the power. Picked up eight to Thomas on that first down carry. Huff, time, and he'll go down. See, that, that right there, Pete, I, that's where I think he's got to get better. You know, he, make a decision, make a throw. Um, this, this is supposed to be a quick play, a quick pass anyway. You know, you see him pump, 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 looking, looking, looking. Nothing's there. You know, throw the ball away, okay, or, or you know, utilize your feet now. But you got to make a decision uh, because that right there is, quite frankly, in my opinion, a negative play. Third and short. Cowden's four of six on third down. The handoff. Roberto room the first mm. down, and he almost broke away. Drank Jacob Harris for a couple more yards. Team's leading tackler a year ago. Absolutely. Again, everyone in the stadium knew where the ball was going, and I think even West Carolina knew where the ball was going. As you see here, we're going back to the. Uh, the pass play, but on that on that last run play, you know, Roberto does a fantastic job running behind his pads, getting north and south, and making sure he picks up the first down. Calvin's moving the chains. Miller moved in motion instead. The pitch goes to Roberto. Now beyond 130 yards rushing in the game. 62 yards sprint for the first score on the second snap of the ball game for Furman in the opening quarter. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of this here in the third quarter. Just a lot of running in between the tackles, you know, challenging that offensive line. Hey, we've got a 14-point lead here in the second half. You know, let's milk and take a lot of time off of this clock here in the third quarter um, and, and really try to bring this thing home. Kendall Dean. A couple of yards after he was hit initially. Finally wrapped up by Keaton. Not a bad play. Again, one of those plays where it forces the defense to have to respect the, the, the pass game, which should help, you know, um, continue to make sure your run game stays strong. But again, big third and two situation. I think everyone in the stadium knows where the ball's going. Paladins very experienced on the offensive line, not all that deep. They pretty much play the same five or six guys during a game. They fake it to situation, play action, pressure, and he's sacked. You gotta make a decision, son, make a decision. Okay, you, you, you know it's third and two. You've got to get this first down. Samari so right. Dukes, the freshman. And you know, you get out there on, on the rollout, make a decision. You don't have all day to sit back there and throw the football. If it's not there, run it. If you don't want to run it because you can't, you can't get the first down, throw the ball away, punt the football. But taking a big sack like that, it takes a lot of momentum from your sideline and shifts it to the opposing Holding. team sideline. Defense number one. 10 yard penalty wow. from the but previous away from spot. that play in the Automatic. secondary they were first holding down. and that may explain why Huff waited so long as they had disrupted at Western Carolina the receiver's route. So Take it away, Dukes. Looked like he had his first career sacks, and that is big right there because instead of making Furman punt, that gives him a new set of downs and in Catamount's territory at the 42. And now you know what they're going to do. They're going to run the football, take even more time off the clock, which is even a taller task for a backup quarterback to try to come in with limited time and try to make a comeback. Here's Devin Abrams. Push that pile, get in there. And Drive he him. continues to for a first down and then some. Mm. Man. That is pure strength for Devin Abrams, the we, fifth year senior out of Pensacola. We can tell who's been in the weight room and who's not. I mean, just pushing this pile. Can't seem to get him on the ground. Jacob Joe Hanning, one of the offensive linemen, played his high school ball just down the road at St. Joe's among those providing some block and some help as well. Shout out to Coach Nash of St. Joe's. Huff off play action. Has to get out of there. Oh. Almost broke away. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage. 
Looked like the Paladins uh, saw Western Carolina bring the house that time. <laughs> yeah, they brought everybody. And again, nothing's there. Get up field, nice play. Again, another truck. Ed Jones, a sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, came to them from Cisco Junior College. Had the first hit, did a good job reading that play for the Catamounts. Brings up a second down and 10. Roberto. Ooh, nice cut. And off the cutback, gets down to the 20-yard line. I mean, he runs so well in between the tackles, Pete. I mean, he's such a force to try to bring down. Right behind that good offensive lineman. Carlos Davis still being attended to in the medical area. And you can clearly see a, a guy who's really had some issues this season with a right shoulder. His head coach thought that he was just about all the way back coming into this game, but Gilby took him down and the full weight of the 240-pound Furman linebacker landing on Davis as he went down to the turf with the right shoulder. Third down, Ryan. Boy, it looked like he was going to try to throw on the run, but again, the Catamounts do a good job. First one to come off the pile, Samari Duke, but others were there before him. I think it was supposed to be a shuttle play. You see right here, he was going to try to shuttle it inside, and he had him wide open. He just, again, got to make a decision. K.J. Milner, decision. senior defensive end, made the first hit. Talented player out of Hinesville, Georgia. So the field goal group out for the Paladins, and this will be a attempt of... About 38 yards. Ian Williams, who's their longer kicker, with the snap down, and the kick is up, and it's good. You'll see both LaPro and Williams, who's now three of four on the season on field goals. Paladins grow the lead to 17. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart-pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. As you know, Furman University is located in Greenville, South Carolina, but the Paladins currently have 11 players on their roster from the state of Texas. Among them, the pride of Prosper, Texas, Wayne Anderson, who began this second half with a 97-yard kickoff return. Past Texas alums include Bob Kane, the longtime former head coach of the Paladins, who also, as a player at Furman, was all Southern Conference in 1936. It's a little bit of a drive out I-20 and up I-85 to get from most parts of Texas to the Furman campus, but many have come this way. We welcome you back into Paladin Stadium on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. You see the banner in the background, proudly displaying the logo. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Love some Ingalls, Pete. 
It's getting to that time of year, my favorite time of year. Go ahead and go down to Ingalls, get all those Thanksgiving supplies. Do a practice Thanksgiving dinner. Make sure everything tastes good before the big day in, in uh, November. After the Williams field goal, another touchback. Ian Williams, big factor in this kicking game this year. They've had some great kickers over the years here at Furman. And combination of Williams and LaPro has been very good so far this season. So first and 10 of the 25, and of course the big storyline here, will we see Davis return after being banged up, or will we see the true freshman, Cole Gonzalez, and it appears to be the latter as Gonzalez waiting to take his first snap of this game. Playing in his fifth game this season, he came on with 8 of 12 last week at Mercer. And a handoff inside. And it goes to Jalen Williams. So a lot of pressure on Cole Gonzalez because even though they're down by 17 in a three-possession ball game, Kerwin Bell, I'll be, he'll be the first to tell you, very much expects they can still be in this contest. See what he did against Presbyterian in place of Davis, who missed that game. That was earlier in the Ooh, season. Nice little juke. juke or two to get across the 30 by Jalen Williams. Nice juke. And again, you know, trying to establish the run game with the backup quarterback early, build some confidence. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some easy passes, you know, to the tight end, easy passes to the flat. Again, trying to get him caught up to gain speed. Uh, but he better hurry up because they've only got so much time left here in the second half. Try to come back from 17. Adam Mounts, four of nine on third down. Gonzalez from Ocala, Florida, played at Trinity Catholic, true freshman. Big situation for him in a SoCon game. Pressure comes, firing long, completing. Nice. And getting a foot in bounds, Toller Keegley on a huge first down pickup. Well, that'll, that'll wake you up right there if, if you're not already woken up as a backup quarterback. You know, having to you know, feel the pressure right up the middle, big third down play. And then making a nice heave down the field to keep the drive alive. Fantastic job by the young man. In limited work, a 75% passer is Gonzalez. That one went for 31 yards. Time in the pocket. And they'll simply throw it away. Hey, nice job throwing it away, not trying to force anything. But he's got to look and survey the whole field. He had a nice, nice open route right across the middle from the tight end. He could have dumped it there. But again, he's fixed down the field on one particular receiver here. This is the previous catch. Nice grab right there. Um, Toler but, by Toler Kigu. But again, he's got to be able to see, survey the entire football field and, and uh, take what the defense is giving him. Second down and 10 at the 38. Well, it looked like a bit of an exchange issue, and Williams was able, able to spin away from it. Jalen Williams, ninth carry, and he makes it third down, and looks like four. It's going to be so critical that they make sure they can establish the run game with a backup quarterback. Third down, another handoff, this time Jones, and he's going to be close. I think he's got it. And it will be a first down carry for T.J. Jones. And again, as he gets more first downs, as the drive continues to build, he just continues to build his confidence as the quarterback, as the leader of the offensive unit. Play stop momentarily by Michael Farmer, our referee. I believe they needed to adjust something on the far sideline from us and from our camera perspective with the chain. So first and 10, just inside the 30. Play action. Nice. Gonzalez will tuck it and run. And able to break through a couple. Late penalty flag thrown. I think it's going to come back, though, Pete. They brought some pressure up the middle. And again, you know, the un unexpected blitz. Good decision. Again, seeing all the seeing the sea open up, and he just walked straight on through like Moses. But again, offensive Hold lineman got his hands on the outside. Zero. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Ten yard from the first down. Gonzalez, 61 yards rushing on 19 carries coming in and showing some ability there, but again, it comes back on the penalty. Let's find that hole. Oh, and you can't do that. <laughs> can't do that, big fella. Bryce McCormick was wrapped up. 
from his linebacker. Backs him up to the 38-yard line. In the flat, Jones. Paladins read it well. One of the best in the Southern Conference, the corner. Travis Blackshear on the stop. Yeah, and again, I'm trying to get these simple throws to build the quarterback's confidence up. But again, it, he's got to see the defense. And look, the numbers just don't make sense for us to throw the football out there. Um, you know, check to a different play, get the ball to a different receiver. But again, he's the backup quarterback, so he might not get those extra reps that the first string quarterback may have gotten this past week in practice. Under three and a half minutes to go in our third quarter in a 17 point game. Obviously, big possession here for the Catamounts. He looked downfield at Gonzalez, settles for Jones. McCormick would have none of it, and it'll be third down and long. Yeah, this is tough. And again, he's just digging deeper and deeper here. But, I, you know, third and long situation here, Pete. Again, you gotta look at screens, you gotta look at quarterback draws. You know, how many plays in the playbook does he really have, you know, to complete a third and, you know, 20 plus? So again, I think you've gotta f find out what's working for this guy and put him in a position with plays uh, that you can get good production from. McCormick among the Paladins tackles leaders in the game with seven. Third down and a mile. Gonzalez and well beyond the intended target Rafael Williams and we'll see the Catamounts have to punt Gonzalez had that long completion on that series to Keegley but once they got across the 50 not a whole lot happened good job by the Paladins defense adjusting Cali Chiswick go back deep and return to the game so far Wind now blowing pretty well from the right to left of the punter, Brandon Dickerson, who came in averaging better than 43 yards a kick. Trying to drop it to where his team can down it. And instead, the fair catch called for at the six yard line by Chiswick. That's where the Paladins will go to work on offense with 2.20 remaining in our third quarter. They're up by 17 on our Ingalls SOCON game of the week. While most drivers spend their lives going from point A to B, in America, we're all about point X. That's why our most versatile BMW X-Range vehicles are proudly manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X-Range, your next X-Venture, starts here. Receive a $1,500 lease credit. models now through October 31st. Living with joint pain isn't easy, but lately dealing with it has felt even harder. So you've been putting up with it. That stops today. Today you stand up for yourself and say enough, and we solve it. Because we have the solutions to get you back on your feet. You're ready. It's your time. Visit bondsupport.com slash ortho to make an appointment and get started with your joint replacement today. Bond Secor, healthcare for the universe of you. fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> this is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. Nobody from nowhere, never gonna happen. Your dreams, kid. Hundred to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. They are rocking and rolling here at Furman, both on the field and in the stands, having a great time out of the Palins game. Just a picture perfect October upstate South Carolina day. We get them all throughout the fall here. 
Big weekend of the Greenville area. We know to the top of the telecast, the annual fall for Greenville Festival, and with yep. the closed streets downtown, you've got all kinds of performers and that kind of thing. Carrie Underwood is performing this evening at the really? arena in downtown Greenville. So a big weekend. Oh. And this guy's having a big day, and it continues. Bursting out across the 35 is Dominic Roberto. That's going to get him even closer to a 200-yard day. Yeah, again, he's just, here's the vision. He's able to, you know, see where the play is going, bounce it outside, and he has the speed and ability, you know, to beat your defenders before they get to the point of contact. So, again, really love what I'm seeing from this back today. Um, again, Dominic Roberto showing us a little bit of everything. Again, he caught, caught a big touchdown pass early in the first half. Took some direct snaps. He's done it all, Pete. Paladins as a team went for 316 on the ground last year. They're eight shy of that Ooh. in a matchup with the Catamounts. And Roberto again. Punish. Finally grabbed from behind by Torres Dobson, but not before he gets all the way down close to the 10. Punish. Another huge burst by the Paladins Jr. Man, look at this right here, Pete. Just boom, right through the gap. Takes 10 for a ride. Man. This guy's built different, Pete. This and guy's a new different. career high for Roberto. Now 218 yards on 18 carries. That time he sprinted for 48. 216 was his previous record. And of course, 196 last year against the Catamount. And a whole nother quarter to go, Pete. Heck, the way this guy can take it from the take it to the house from anywhere in the field. He might get 300 today. Alden's looking to add on, off the fake, the jump, the throw, the catch. Ryan Miller, touchdown. Nice. Second of the day for the senior tight end, and the third toss by Huff. And again, all set up by the run game. Everyone's looking at the running back, respecting that, and then Miller's able to get into position and make an easy touchdown pass and catch between the quarterback. Ryan Miller continues a fine season for this Furman team. Second touchdown, giving him seven on the year. And the extra point is good. A couple of catches in the ball game. In the end zone, Miller, he'll probably end up top five in Furman career receptions. Also leads them this year in receiving yards. And the Paladins turn was a seven-point game of the half with a 27-20 lead into a 44-20 advantage in the closing seconds of our third quarter. Well, not only that, though, Pete, West Carolina, you know, lost their quarterback to a, what seems like to an apparent shoulder injury. Um, it's after taking a big hit. Um, but Furman's been able to continue to do what they've been doing with running the football extremely well, uh, with one of the best running backs in the SoCon, uh, and again, just because they're able to run the football so well and effectively, it opens up to a, lo a lot of easy pass plays as we've seen that resulted in touchdowns. Ian Williams has been busy today, primarily at kicking off. Once again, horn back deep. And he'll let it go. And another touchback in the ball game for Ian Williams. Paladin's trying to take care of business on the home field. You know, we talked about them getting more vertical in the passing game. That's one of the things Clay Hendricks and their folks are emphasizing. Well, we've seen them vertical today, but it's pretty much been in the running game. Yeah, I mean, they, they've utilized the run game to help open up the pass game. I still think they need some more outside true threats. You know, some, some outside weapons that can really you know, take the top off of a defense. And I don't think they quite have that piece yet. But again, that's what recruiting is about. That's what the transfer portal is about. And, um, you know, Coach Hendricks is definitely working uh, to make sure he's getting those extra pieces to add to an already really strong offensive unit. Jalen Williams. So we told you it's a new personal high for Dominic Roberto at 218 yards. He's now ninth in terms of individual rushing games in Furman history. And in case you're wondering, the single game rushing record, 301 yards. 
for the Paladins. That'll be a first down carry for Williams as we wind down here in the third quarter. They had a great running back in the late 90s, Lewis Ivory. No, oh, Lewis. Who was one of the greats in FCS history. Play action, Gonzalez underneath Horn. Nice job. And across midfield with a flag thrown. I think the lineman may have got downfield too early. If I had to guess, because they were, they were really downfield. Nine penalties so far on the Catamount, so far five on Furman. And that will play a downfield. Offense, number 70. Called it, Pete. Now, you're a former collegiate offensive lineman and FCS All-American. How would you know so well, perhaps from personal experience? No, I just, <laughs> because those linemen were already down in position for that block. And I'm just looking at those guys. And as some people would say where I'm from, they ain't that fast. So <laughs> they, they crept down there. Game clock began winding when they put the ball back in place, and it brings us to an end of quarter number three. A dominant 15 minutes for the Furman Paladins. It began with the lightning of Wayne Anderson's kickoff return, included the thunder of Dominic Roberto. They're up big as we head to the fourth. With DirecTV, I can get live TV and on demand together. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Whoops. Oh, no. The housewives are on the field. I repeat, the housewives are on the field. I just want to talk! Oh, no, no, no. Who flips the table? Get your TV together. Call 1 800 Direct TV to save up to $120. Do you want to know what I've been binge watching? Udemy courses. They have thousands of courses that help me advance my career from anywhere, especially with this little one. I need to get in as much learning as I can for both of us. most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. Eli, do they make Joe and Troy stand the entire time? Hey, what are you guys doing here? We're back for 10 more Monday nights. Yeah, well, we've got over 20 years of legendary calls together. We've got a secret handshake. Look, either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything that there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. Could be up there with the greatest of times. And it starts now. You got me kidding me! The Southern Conference telecast here in Greenville, South Carolina is presented by Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. By BMW. 
and by Bon Secours. Start of the fourth quarter with Jared Singleton, Pete Hannity. The Furman Paladins owned a seven-point advantage at the break. They expand that to 44-20 as we head into the final 15 minutes. And mind you, Jared, the Paladins have not allowed a point to anyone over their first six games coming in this season in quarter number four. Williams on the ground on a first and long. Yeah, I mean, this defense is really getting locked in in the second half. And that kind of just, you know, a huge compliment to how well Coach Hendricks and his defensive staff are able to make adjustments in the second half and really, you know, t turn it up uh, from a defensive standpoint to make it hard for opposing teams. David White shaking up on the play. The receiver at the 75-yard touchdown reception in the opening half. Of course, Carlos Davis, if you're just joining us, starting quarterback for Western Carolina, leaving in the third quarter with an apparent re-aggravation of the shoulder injury. Over the middle, nice job turning nice. around and pulling it in by Sincere Lee. And we'll go for a first down. And again, great job by the receiver being able to adjust to that ball uh, and make a great catch. You want to throw the ball in front of the receiver where he's going, not where he's been. Um, but great job by the receiver of being athletic enough to to make a play. Might be a chop block on that one. Gonzalez connecting again, this time to A.J. Bellinger, their tight end. His third catch of the game. He'd missed the past couple, but big return to the lineup. He adds a lot in kind of a hybrid situation. Can play some tight end, but they can also spread him out wide. Another first down. A couple of quick completions to get down to the 31 of Furman. Play action, Gonzalez on the run. He connects with Williams. Another first down, this time inside the 15. Again, I really like when you have an you know, inexperienced quarterback or a backup quarterback rolling him outside the pocket, giving him different levels of options to throw the football to. And he just, you know, rolled out, saw what the defense was giving him, and made a play to his uh, one of his star receivers that they have on the offense. Seventh catch for Williams. He and Jones lead the Catamounts on the day. This time the inside handoff. And inside the 10 goes Jalen Williams. Williams to Toledo transfers had a solid game today. And he's also a big weapon for them catching the ball out of the backfield. And this is where the tempo plays into Western Carolina's favor. You know, they're used to playing fast. They're used to being able to get up to the line of scrimmage quickly and, and get the play off. Brief delay, I believe they needed to adjust the yard marker. Second down and five. This time it's Jones busting nice. outside and into the end zone for the Catamount touchdown. And there you go, just like that. Furman's streak of keeping teams off the scoreboard in the fourth quarter comes to an end. And again, great job by the back being able to see and have the vision of where the where the play was developing, he saw it open up to the right side, made a great cut, protect the football, and boom, points on the board. T.J. Jones had nine rushing touchdowns a year ago when he led the Catamounts in rushing. That's just his second of the season. Down by 24 before that snap, they're going to go for one instead of two. And that makes it a 44-27 game with 12.42 remaining. In our fourth quarter, we'll take a time out here in Greenville in this battle of purple on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Behind every adventure is the road that got you there. Behind every passion are the tools that make it happen. And behind every Ford truck and SUV is a Carolina Ford dealer going the extra mile, finding the vehicle you're looking for. It's our commitment to your journey. That's what it means to be true blue. New inventory is arriving daily. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, go to buyfordnow.com or see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Jewelry has always been the most powerful gift of love, whether it's an engagement or an anniversary. Here at Hales, we're in the business of celebrating your life's most special moments from the past, the present, and the future. Being Greenville's oldest business means we understand that we're only as good as how you feel when you leave the store. We welcome you to visit our flagship jewelry store. Happy ever hails. 
This is no sleepy-headed, moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. It's boat time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bose chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender, even a chicken wants to eat it. Larry, people are trying to eat! Freshman QB Cole Gonzalez leading an eight-play, 75-yard scoring drive for Western Carolina. They make it a 47 ball game early on in the fourth quarter. Next Saturday, we invite you to join us on many of these same stations. Our Eagles SoCon game of the week, the Sanford Bulldogs. They begin the day unbeaten in the conference against the Bucks of ETSU. 3.30 next Saturday from Green Stadium in Johnson City on our Ingalls SoCon game of the week. So the Catamounts trying to hang in this. You have to wonder if perhaps, perhaps, at this point, they might have something on with Paxton Robertson putting it on the tee. Need to get the ball back in a hurry. And Robertson, the run-up, will kick it deep. I tell you, DJ Nate here in Paladin Stadium is doing a great job. Anderson wanted to bring it out, stumbles, and <laughs> they'll put it down at the two. Well, this guy. boy, talk about going from the peak <laughs> to the valley. 97 <laughs> yards back on his first kickoff return of the half, and that what time, in the world? two yards <laughs> because he lost his footing. I'm going to take a knee. Nope, I'm going to take it out. Wait. And of course, pretending we're in an NFL game. If they want to review it, they'd probably put him at the one. They've got the ball spotted inside of the two right now. Honestly, Pete, I think he was doing that so his boy Dominic Roberto can go, you know, 99, 98 yards. Get that single game Furman rushing Get that rushing single record. game, yep. That's all he was in doing. In you're wondering, the longest run in Furman history is 93 yards. So from his own end zone, Huff, and he'll hand it off. And look at Devin Abrams. He's done this Ooh, before in this game. Push that pile, baby. Push that pile. Almost pushed it all the way for a first down. They might give him forward progress to the line to get. As a former offensive lineman, there's nothing more besides a all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet that I enjoy more than seeing a pile like that and just pushing the pile. And, you know, because you're just talking trash. You're yelling. You're like... Get in the way, bro. You you know, I just love that, Pete. Yeah, but give me some perspective here. I think you're probably 95% Chinese buffet, 5% uh, <laughs> run. Uh. This time it's another handoff to the powerful Devin Abrams. And at this point, Pete, it's just going to be a lot of this here in the, in the fourth quarter as they just try to melt this thing down and... Because, again, Furman's on a pursuit of, of getting a championship back here to Greenville. And, you know, this is what championship teams have to do. They have to close out games, um, especially late in the fourth quarter, to make sure that they can solidify the victory. Well, I think the Paladins in their 4-2 and two star, 2-1 two and one in the SoCon. Clay Hendricks openly said it, and you don't often hear coaches be this blunt. He goes, we are better at every position this year than last year and that's mm -hmm. with some new faces in certain spots but with a lot of guys who have returned but have simply done the work in the off season I think Devin Abrams has been getting it done out of the backfield for a long time here at Furman that's a, another first down carry but you can clearly see it this is a different team the physical play is still there but now there's some talent that's upgraded uh, to go with it. And Huff's been a big difference at quarterback. He's been a big difference at quarterback, but let's let's be honest here. I think Dominic Roberto is the major cornerstone for this, this Furman offense. You know, what they have to do is find ways to build around him, and that's where I think Coach Hendricks is trying to get to that 
you know, that who's going to be that receiver that really steps up? So now you have to ask yourself. Oh, oh, ball is loose and Huff able to fall on it. You've got to ask yourself, are we going to try to defend the run or are we going to try to defend against the pass? And right now, you know, they can kind of, as you see here on the replay. Let's see if it was Leali Amatabao oh, who made the original hit. Put his no, helmet, actually it wasn't. It was Jalen Floyd who delivered the pop. Put his helmet right on the ball. Great tackle. But, hey, Furman's able to get back on top of it. But getting back to the point, they need some extra pieces on the outside to really complement the run game, I think. And that really is going to take them to the next level. Just one turnover in this game. That was the Ryan interception in the second quarter that led to a Furman touchdown. Lost a seven on the play. Now they go to the speedster, Thomas. And it'll be third down and long. And that's one thing about Furman. It seems like they always have just a, you know, slew of backs that just be able to rotate in and rotate out and stay fresh. Third and ten, and suffice it to say, a very big third down upcoming for the Catamounts. I anticipate them, you know, keeping it on the ground, running the football, using the whole play clock. Paladins are five of eight on third down tries in the game. And, you know, a big part of, of that is because they're able to have third and two, third and one type situations. Yeah, letting that play clock run down to two. Ooh, and nice. Boy, a hard hit that time. On Thomas. Leali Matafau again with a big stop for Western Carolina. Big addition to their team. A fellow born in Honolulu, came to them from San Antonio. Standing up the running back. So nice we'll see tackle. the Paladins have to punt it away. Nice tackle. And again, this is going to be, despite despite being up 44-27, you best believe Coach Hendricks is still going to use that possession as a teaching, coaching moment to talk to his guys about, hey, we've got to be able to stay ahead of schedule, protect the football. A.J. Colombo on the return of the Levy punt. And he'll be thrown to the turf shy of the 45. And continue to grow and continue to um, go down the field and try to put points on the board. Take a timeout, fourth quarter. Western Carolina trying to get further back into it in Greenville. Coors Light wants to keep your chores light. Enter now for a chance to win a whole season of free laundry services while you chill and watch the games. Can Coors Light do my laundry too? These are delicates, my man. Halloween fun made easy. That's totally Target. When you stay at a Verbo, the host doesn't stay with you. Because without privacy in your vacation home, it isn't really a vacation, is it? I shop with the Rakuten app to get cash back anytime, anywhere. I even get cha-ching when I sing. Home decor, clothes. Electronics and mirrors. I can shop at over 3,500 stores, including travel sites. <laughs> never been better. That is hockey. On this beautiful October Saturday at beautiful Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina, we welcome you back to the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week, presented by Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. 
Herman's lead 44 to 27 with 8.25 remaining in the fourth quarter. Catamount's about to go back on offense and regardless of the outcome of the game and the last thing they wanted to see was Carlos Davis, their starting QB go down with an injury, but they are getting some important reps against a very good and physical defense for Cole Gonzalez, the true freshman, who's looked good since coming on in the third quarter. Yeah, he's looked, he's looked strong, gotten better and better. Uh, but again, he's got, he has to get some more game reps to continue to build on his own development as a quarterback. Finding Sincere Lee, his fellow freshman out of Clearwater, Florida. Big Florida influence on this Catamounts roster. Time a pass from a guy from Ocala to a receiver from Clearwater. First and ten, play action, firing long and looking deep, nice. and it's Lee for the touchdown. What a pass. Another quick strike by the Catamounts in the passing game. What a great pass. A lot of confidence to be able to sit back there. Great protection. And just a great route. I mean, he just beat his guy. And this is the second time he's been beat. Four teams been beat twice. Been beat twice. And then, you know, to give up a, a play like that here late in the fourth quarter, West Carolina's on to trying to make a comeback. Cardiac Cats. Make it a nine-point game with this extra point if it's good by McCollum. And just like that, 14 unanswered for the Catamounts. 10-point game. My, my math, they said there'd be no math. My math is off. A 10-point game, obviously. 10-point game. Remember, the Catamounts erased two 11-point deficits last year in rallying for the one-point 43-42 win in Cullowick. Going to take a timeout. 7.54 to go. Every man's undercarriage. Better beware. In the underwear nightmare. Go buck naked. Only at Duluth Trading. Behind every adventure is the road that got you there. It's our commitment to your journey. That's what it means to be true blue. New inventory is arriving daily. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, see your Carolina Ford dealer today. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. Eli, do they make Joe and Troy stand the entire time? Hey, what are you guys doing here? We're back for 10 more Monday nights. Yeah, well, we've got over 20 years of legendary calls together. We've got a secret handshake. Look, either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. MLS Cup Playoffs. Time to show it to the world. Don't miss the 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, October 15th through the 30th. Again, just winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup. Got man-on-man -man coverage. 14, you see right here from the jump. Just gets beat, you know, and he's going to get some more speed. Just a better athlete. Touchdown again, West Carolina. Simple as that. 14's had a, a pretty rough day today. Sincere Lee, a three-star recruit out of the Tampa Bay area and a speedster, and somebody they're hoping grows up in a hurry in their program. We've done a nice job today. Third touchdown catch of the season. Gonna factor in their passing game. Lee now with three catches, 74 yards on the afternoon. It ain't over yet, Pete. Furman better come out 
we're gonna get this football back and, and do something. It's gonna be interesting, you know, I think they should stay with the same kind of philosophy. You gotta run the football. You know, Dominic Roberto's had a fantastic game so far. You gotta feed the beast, get him the ball back. Tell your offensive lineman, hey, we are trying to win a championship. We need you guys to, to dig deep and make sure we finish the game strong and, and put a nice five-minute drive together, march down the field, get a touchdown. That's what Furman needs to be doing on this, on this possession. Robertson's kick leading to the touchback. Remember the Paladins' previous series started their own two. They gave it to Abrams. He gave him some breathing room. They had the fumble that Huff was able to fall on because that could have been disastrous. Catamounts, though, were still able to get the stop and the score. This time it's Roberto. Yep, yep. Well over yep. 200 yards, adding to his career high, and he gets out close to the 35. More of that. Need more of that. You know, that's what you need right there. And they like running to that left side. You need more of that on this drive and milk this thing down. Herman getting close to a 400-yard rushing day, 386 so far. A year ago, they ran for 316 in this matchup. And averaging just under 200. Second in the SOCON at just over 192. Second and one, Abrams. And they'll give him forward progress out to the 36. Nice start to the drive, getting a first down going. Again, how does how does a team finish a game, finish a drive, is, is a great indicator on if they're championship focused or not. Championship level teams can finish games, can put together long drives that result in points uh, to continue to make sure that you secure the victory. That's what championship teams do. Paladins trying to pick up the program's 630th win as a SOCON member and add to their conference record in that category. First down, carry Roberto. 20th carry of the ball game for the senior, now 227 yards rushing. Man. Great job right there. And again, uh, kudos to his offensive lineman. Can't do anything without the big boys up front, Pete. Next couple of downs can be big as we're coming up on six minutes to play. You see the hard hit once again. Leale Imadafau in on the stop for Western Carolina. Nice job with the name right there, Pete. One of the longer ones you'll come across in college football this season. Nice job. Someone's been doing their prep work. Second down, eight. Again, nice. a handoff. Oh. This time, it's Roberto getting another first down and getting into Catamount's territory. He's closing in on a 250-yard afternoon. Seeing they pulled two linemen. They pulled the center and the guard. And he just made the lineman look right, even though his center pulled and didn't hit anybody. Just whiffed. Fantastic running job. And again, that's what championship teams have to do. Close out ball games, put together long drives that result in points. 15 yards on the carry by Roberto. So now you give him 244 on 21 attempts. That is third best in a game in the storied history of Furman Paladins football. Keep First feeding the beast. 47. Again, number eight. Keep feeding the beast. Dominic Roberto, fourth year junior, played at Pine Forest High in Fayetteville before coming from the Eastern Carolinas here to the upstate. And now Paladin just grinding this one out and that clock just continues to roll. That's what you want to do. I mean, now personally as offensive lineman, I hate sit, standing and being in my stance for 15, 20 seconds. I'd rather just be in the huddle and break out and run to the line real quick, but you know, to each his own. This time Abrams. And it'll bring up third down, and now Kerwin Bell will use the first of his three timeouts he had in his pocket here in the second half and stop the clock with 4.09 to go with a third down and four coming up. 
give the Catamounts credit. They saw a seven-point deficit at the half swell to 24. But they have fought back to make this thing interesting, but they are probably in a must-stop situation if they have any hope to continue their comeback with the third down and four upcoming after the timeout. Absolutely right. I mean, that's what Coach Bell's telling his team right now. Hey, we have got to win this third down because the way Furman's running the football right now, the way they're able to control the clock and just, you know, milk this thing down to triple zeros, uh, we have got to find a way to, to win on this third down. That's what Coach Bell's telling his defense, making sure they've got the, everyone's aligned. There's no you know, misalignment in coverage. Everyone else understands what they need to do. And they're able to make a, a big stop here on third down. I tell you, DJ Nate, man, he's he's got the power of the stadium rocking. Third down and four. In case you're wondering, Huff in the game, just nine attempts. He's seven of nine for 66 yards. I doubt they put it in the air here. They won't. Abrams, hard yards mm. for the first down. That was huge. And Furman moves the chain. And again, just giving it to, you know, the backs and, and, and trusting your offensive linemen saying, hey, we need to pick this up. Can we can we count on you? And all five guys answered the call by saying, yes, we can, by picking up that first down. Fantastic job by the big fellas up front creating those openings. Letting that play clock wind down about another 10 seconds before they snap. See, 63's got to be in the stands for the whole, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Not fair, Pete. Just stay in the huddle. Wyatt Hughes appreciates your sentiment. Abrams. By the way, on a day when Roberto's had one of the great rushing games in Paladin's history, Abrams now getting close to 20 carries and close to 90 yards. And another timeout on the field, this time for an injured player. Kevin Abrams came in averaging about four yards a carry. And they're attending to the injured player. It, initially, I thought it might be an offensive lineman. No, we athletes, Pete, we don't get hurt. And could it be Parks Gissinger, the backup tight end? And it is. That looks like he'll walk off under his own strength. Let's see if we can find out what happened. Just got rolled up on. Hopefully the big fellow's all right. You know, tight ends are just are like offensive linemen. They're just like the little brother. Yeah, know? but in this offense, their main tight end is more like a wide <laughs> receiver with his ability as a all-SOCOM player and also an All-American on the FCS level. Tight ends are just, just little brother offensive linemen. That's all. Because they, they never know the play the, yeah. or, or where the block. They always come up to the tackle. Hey, where we go? Left, right? <laughs> hey, where we? What, what's your? What, you got him? And they never help you when you got a really big uh, defensive lineman you're going against. Yeah. I think I'm the, reading the resentment of interior uh, offensive lineman who's not eligible to touch the ball and well, no, 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 no. the tight end. I touch the ball every play. Not touch the ball when it's in the air or hand it off to you. Don't get it twisted, Pete. I touch the ball every play, baby. As a center, yeah. It starts with it starts with it starts with the center. But we speak of Ryan Miller. He's had one of the great careers as a tight end in Furman history. And they've really had some good ones over the years. And when they were playing for national titles in the 80s, and then again under Bobby Johnson right at the turn of the century, they were a team that could throw to the tight end. Second down and 10. Abrams again. Nice. And boy, the explosion on first contact. You see it, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's, looking for, he, he's looking for hits, you know? And it'll be a second timeout used by Western Carolina. Stops the clock with 2.33 to go. So the Furman Paladins, two minutes and 33 seconds away from claiming a 35th win all time in this 50th meeting of the series. Western Carolina with ETSU, they play the Blue Ridge border battle. They would probably tell you that's their biggest football rivalry in the SOCON, but Furman, I would think, is right up there. Wofford over the years, since they joined the SOCON back in 1997, has certainly 
grown in terms of the eyes of a rivalry for Western Carolina. Herman, of course, was the Citadel, a longtime SOCON com uh, compadre, if you will, from back in 1936, and Wofford, right at the top of the Paladins rivalry list. Here is Roberto, oh! loses the ball, picked up by the Catamounts, and they force the turnover with 2.26 to go. It ain't over yet, Pete. A great job putting the helmet right on the ball, causing a turnover. Great job. See, he makes the tackle, puts his helmet right on the football, scoops it up. Hey, and we know Western scores quick. It ain't over till it's over, Pete. Samari Dukes, the freshman out of Miami, is having a great game. The first turnover in the contest by the Paladins, just their 13th of the year. But mind you, you know, um, uh, Dominic's had a, a career day, and he also has a tackle now. So he's done it all. It was a good recovery that time after giving up the football to make sure that Dukes didn't stay on his feet and give them a quick score defensively. So new life for the Catamounts and their freshman QB, Cole Gonzalez, on a relief for the injured Carlos Davis. And looking big on the snap, Lee oh. behind the defense, oh. breaks away, and Sincere oh Lee says, gosh. how do you do once more? Oh, my gosh. How about these Catamounts freshmen? Hey, they got a different speed. At least it's not 14, but again, these corners are having a rough day. They're getting trunked, they're getting beaten. Beat deep, not able to cover anyone one on one. I mean, can we please get them some help? Ivan Yates on the coverage, beautifully thrown ball by Gonzalez on the connection. 69 yards from one freshman to the other. How about Sincere Lee? And frankly, Cole Gonzalez off the bench. And this time, the extra point. Knocked down the Paladins. Earlier got a hand on one. That was waved off, but for a second time this season, they deny an extra point. This is second block today, Pete. Matt Chichovka, the defensive lineman, got a hand on it. It's a four-point game. That could prove to be huge here in Greenville. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. MLS Cup Playoffs. October 15th through the 30th. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready to make a statement. Today we got one mindset. Get a win. Chicago is ready to bear down. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. The Patriots are ready to do their job. We just got to keep doing that. That's exactly what we want to do right there. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. The Chicago Bears square off with Belichick and the Patriots. Suddenly, quite a tight game here at Paladin <laughs> Stadium. 44 to 40, Western Carolina, 20 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Paladins had not allowed a point in quarter number four over their first six games. Next Saturday, 
We hope to have the same kind of excitement in Johnson City, Sanford, and ETSU, 3.30 on many of these same stations next Saturday for the Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Still 2.18 to go in this Saturday's ball game. Catamounts have one timeout remaining, and this looks like it's going to be an onside kick try. Furman thinks so. Only Callie Chiswick is back deep for the Paladins. And now it's up to the foot of Paxton Robertson. See if he can execute it. Get it the 10 yards that it needs to. He does. Picked up. There's Blackshear. Heads up play by Travis Blackshear. It's live for the kicking team wherever they can grab it. And a nice job by the senior cornerback on special team. Yeah, great job. Again, special team. Furman has clearly won the special team battle all afternoon with the block field goals. Uh, and again, making sure that they're securing the onside kick. Fantastic job so far uh, by this Palantir team when it comes to special teams and overall. German special teams coach, one Tommy Spangler. It's also their defensive coordinator. Tommy Spangler, one of the really, really great college football coaches in the Southeast over the years. Was the head coach at Presbyterian in a second stint before coming up here to Greenville last season. Timeout call by the Paladins. So Clay Hendricks, I think, wants to say, you know, 213 to go. Get a couple of first downs, the game's over. But he saw an 11 point lead go away late last year in Cullowee, and I think he just wants to make sure everyone's on the same page. And frankly, I think the Catamounts appreciate that because they can have a talk defensively. Well, again, he's just kind of making sure, hey, offensive line, let's get a clean snap. Let's make sure we understand what our assignments are. Let's make sure that we're, you know, protecting the football when we're handing it off during the mesh point. All those little things, coach is kind of reminding them to go through uh, because they want to make sure they close this thing out with a victory and not with a silly fumble or a botched snap or a misassignment, which again could put uh, Weston in a position to come back and win this thing. First and 10 at the 25. Roberto. That should get him to 250 yards in the game on his 24th carry. Catamounts holding that timeout. They obviously need to get back-to-back -back stops here. You suppose they would use it after third down. Ian Williams is the long field goal kicker for Furman if they elected to do that. I don't think they would, but he's at a 44-yarder. You would think this is four-down territory as far as Furman's concerned, but boy, with the way Gonzalez has come off the bench slinging, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable without at least having a little bit more than a four-point lead. Taking a lot of time. Play clock going down to two at the snap. Roberto. And it'll bring up third down. And actually now Kerwin Bell will call the timeout with 119 to go. And I think part of the storyline today would be fitting if Dominic Roberto is the one who gets the clinching first down for this Paladins team based on the kind of effort he has had today. Yeah, I mean, he's had a, you know, a, a true... Um, Warriors effort as far as how he's run the football and he's done a little bit of everything Pete. He's caught the football out the backfield for touchdowns. He's broken a long run for a touchdown He's taken some direct snaps from right on the goal line for touchdowns um, And he's, he's just been a, a real cornerstone for uh, this offensive unit for the Paladins um, So I, I have no doubt that some way shape or form He's either gonna get the football or be, you know, kind of a, a distraction for someone else because he's, he gets so much attention because of the production that he produces uh, for this offensive unit. Roberto, a year ago, led the Paladins with 709 yards for the season. His effort to this point has him at 685 here in the seventh game of this 2022 campaign. Third down and five. Oh, Huff didn't have a running back to hand to. Penalty flag thrown behind him. He throws it away. That's going to stop the clock. And we got with 111 to go, and probably a holding penalty against the Paladins. That is not how Coach Hendricks probably drew it up on the on the sideline right before that play. Obviously a broken play because there was no running back to hand off to. Holding so. offense number 75. That's what it is. The 
Fourth down. So if they elect to attempt the field goal, it'll be about a 37 yard as you see the hold. I'll kick the field goal, Pete. Yeah, I think we will, and we'll see the guy they try for the longer field goals with this team, Ian Williams, who hit one earlier. It's right dab in the middle, too. Win shouldn't be a problem. Williams from 38 yards in the third quarter. At nope. the time, made it a 37 to 20 game. This will be an attempt from about the same distance. Snap down, kick on the way, and it's good. Wasn't the prettiest of floaters through the uprights, but it extends the lead to seven with 107 to go. <laughs> First points in a while for this Furman team. Yeah, and but the thing is though, Pete, you know, if you're West of Carolina, you still have a minute seven left, you know, to, for, for a miracle. And uh, we've seen how quickly they can move down the field and we see how quickly they can score. So again, it's not over till it's over. Who'd have thunk it at 44 to 20 after three quarters that we'd be sitting with Western Carolina on the verge of getting the ball back and a chance but, to but maybe we, get this thing to overtime. We, we knew it was going to be a high-scoring game. You know, you have two of the top four uh, higher-scoring teams in the SOCON uh, playing this afternoon, so we, we knew it was going to be a high-scoring game, uh, but it's just been very exciting for sure. Paladins averaging 27.2 points coming in. That amounts to 33.7 second in the SOCOM. Williams, instead of trying for another touchback, squibbing it. Oh, hard hit on the up man. Blue Monroe for Western Carolina. But decent field position to get the ball back for the freshman Cole Gonzalez and this Catamounts team. It's gonna be interesting, Pete. Gonzalez, 9 of 11 for 199 yards. A couple of touchdowns, both deep passes to Sincere Lee. One a 69-yarder, the other from 42. And Gonzalez, a very big moment in his first season in a Catamounts uniform out of Ocala, Florida. 14 is not in the game. We know that. Pressure comes. Almost ran into his own man. He's going to try to get to the sideline, and he can't. Nope. Great job coming up. Callie Chiswick, son of a Power 5 head coach from past years, with a big stop, and a penalty flag is down as well. Probably a hold, but I'm looking for 14 or 22 as my corners, which one I'm attack. Holding offense number 70. Help. Paladins will take the penalty in the yards and also... About 10 seconds came off the game clock as well. You can't do that, big fella. Again, you can't get beat deep. You keep those two safeties deep to make sure nothing gets behind those guys. Got him. Gonzalez. Pass was low. Not so sure it's not the worst thing. The ball did not get to TJ Jones. Brings up a second down and long. 44 seconds remain. So he had it again. They're playing that two deep zone look. That way those corners can be real, real aggressive and physical at the line of scrimmage, kind of get the timing uh, off for these receivers. Jalen Miller was right there. He would have made the stop and might have brought Jones down in bounds. And of course, Western Carolina out of timeouts. Find the matchup. Cole Gonzalez, six feet, 190 pounds. A year ago, he was in high school. Firing, but well out of bounds. Closest player to the ball was Jalen Williams, the running back. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, that's not the play right there. Again, you don't want to have your, in my opinion, you don't want to have the receivers you know, doing these little stop at the at the uh, first down marker type routes. You want them to be going deep downfield. You need chunk plays. And right there, you know, you see them get to the 
the first down marker and kind of going out, you don't need those kind of plays. You need deep down the field plays, crossing route plays, um, which can allow you to have some big play moments. You see sincerely at the top of your screen, big factor in the fourth quarter. Gonzalez firing down field and falling to the turf, making the grab out near the 45. That's Rafael Williams, shy of the first down marker. Clock Gotta continues to wind. Got to take a shot deep. This is fourth down. Can't even clock it here. You got to play. Nope, got to play it. Gonzalez over the middle. First down. Clock now you will can stop. Clock it. Now you can clock Williams it. brought it in. 11 seconds to go. They'll get up the line Spike and try it. to clock it. Hurry up. And they clock it with 10 seconds to go. One shot, maybe two. You know, just one shot. It's, it's too far out for two shots. You got to get to the end zone now. So probably Gonzalez runs along the line, tries to find a man, stretch it out as long as he can. And you've got a you've got a right-handed quarterback, okay? So you're on the left hash. What I'm doing, I'm getting the ball, I'm rolling him out to the right, and I'm having my best receiver on the left side going deep as a deep post, coming across the field, giving him time to get into the end zone and making a heave to him. Three men top of your screen, one receiver at the bottom. Gonzalez going to fire long. Pass. Flag is thrown. Wow. New life for the Catamounts. He's going to get one more play. He's got three seconds. Man. It was over in the direction of Rafael Williams, their surest receiver. I mean, the, the defender just panicked. I mean, no need to grab on. Play technique. Just panic. And that time on the coverage, Dominic Morris, who returned from injury for the Paladins in their secondary. Pass interference. Defense number four. 15 penalty from the previous time. Too bad it's not down. NFL. Oh, they'd have the ball right there on the one yard line. I think we talked about that last week. I was just going to say, weren't we talking about the, <laughs> the difference in the pass interference in pro and college? But again, and again, not a bad, not a bad strategy. Maybe that was part of the strategy. Hey, let's try to get some, a cheap pickup, and get a, a, a PI call. But hey, here's your ball game right here. Got to get to the end zone. Could be our final snap of what has been an entertaining afternoon here at Paladin Stadium. It's first and ten. Of course, that's not what matters. From the 26. Gonzalez. Don't run it. Firing. Leaping attempt at a catch. It was made. But that'll do it. Bellinger made the grab, but he made it about four yards shy of the end zone. And fittingly, this game ends with the ball in the air. End of the game. And we get the final word from Michael Farmer. So the Furman Paladins bent. Oh, they bent in the fourth quarter, but did not break. And they survive with a 47 to 40 win. One more play at the pass to Bellinger. Yeah, again, a great job. Furman's defense keeping everything in front of them, not letting anyone get behind them. I think that was actually Lee. It was Sincere Lee. I thought it was 11, but it was number 10 Lee. And Sincere Lee, a final catch on his breakout game of his freshman season. What a game it was. Five grabs for 164 yards and two touchdowns. Let's give you our Pepsi player of the game. And it's the Furman Paladins fine running back, Dominic Roberto. Woo. His day started with a bang. A 62-yard sprint on his way to 25 carries, 252 yards, a new career high, and a new... Now moving up the charts for Furman, the third best rushing game in Paladin's history. Three touchdowns on the game, two on the ground, and one by air for Dominic Roberto of Furman, our Pepsi player of the game. He had a busy day, busy afternoon. Again, great job. We talked about him as being one of our highlight players uh, in the intro. I really like what I'm seeing from this Furman offense. I think their offense is playing well. Defense had a little questions there at the end as far as how they're able to let uh, Western get back into this thing and make it a ball game. Um, but again, Furman, they're able to win another Saturday and still stay in striking distance um, for their chase for another SoCon title. Next Saturday, 3.30 from Johnson City on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week, Sanford and ETSU. 
the Paladins survive. Western Carolina showing you today they're the team you least want to face with that offensive ability they have, and they come up just shy. A seven-point defeat at the hands of Furman. 47-40, to 40, our final score. Dominic Roberto and company celebrate a fifth win of the year and go to 3-1 and one in the SoCon. On behalf of Jared Singleton and our wonderful crew here at Paladin Stadium, Pete Kennedy saying so long. We'll see you next Saturday at 3.30 from Johnson City. Thousands of games, including the one you want. Let's go! That is hockey. Live NHL games from every team. Home and away games when you're away from home. That is hockey. The moments no one has but us. The plays no one has but us. That is hockey on ESPN+. Did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything that there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. Yeah. The Mexico City!